Hey guys, we get started in just a couple minutes. About uh, two more minutes for people to hop on here. Just wanted to say hi, Brian, Land Studio. Thanks for sharing, Dwayne. Uh, SMU, hey. Nathaniel, welcome back. I appreciate that. I, this, this is a highlight of my Friday, too. Get to hang out with you guys. It's awesome. Alejandro, how's it going? Marvin. Um, Brian, I should tell you, this is, uh, this is my adultish t-shirt. This is what I wear when I'm feeling particularly immature. Um, and I don't recall where I got it. <laughs> so, that didn't help much. But, uh, thanks. How's everybody's Friday going so far? And where, where y'all, where's everybody at? We're, we're here in Boulder, Colorado. Um... Chesterfield, England. All right. It must be, uh, let's see, what, eight hours difference? So going on 8 p.m., something like that. Uh, SMU, this is just, this is kind of our little teaser. This is our preview before we, we blast into full color and start modeling. This is our, uh, you know, like the opening credits kind of thing. <laughs> Aubrey's looking forward to some... Uh, Harry Potterness. Marvin's call or watching from Florida. That's right, Stephen. Uh, you know it's almost time to go home for the week when you get to hear my voice and see my smiling face. <laughs> 7 p.m. All right, Washington, just off the beach. Yeah, we don't got the beach thing going on here. We got mountains and deserts, and that's about it. No beaches here. Oh, Brian's asking about Mark's t-shirt. Oh, well, yeah, I guess his is okay, too. The Great Lakes t-shirt. Our scale figure from the current version of SketchUp. All right, we're ready to get this thing rolling. Hey, guys, I am Aaron. If we haven't met before, it's good to meet you. A virtual handshake. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, it is Friday. That means we get to hang out and do some live modeling. So... You know, highlight of my week. So hopefully you guys like it. Well, obviously you like it somewhat if you showed up already. You're, you're right at noon. You're probably uh, ready for this on some level. Let's see, we got uh, Melbourne, Australia, Beirut, Beirut, Lebanon, uh, Madison, Peru, Istanbul, uh, Eger, Hungary, Algeria, Dublin, man. You guys are far more dedicated than I am. <laughs> um, Philippines, I well, love you too, Ephraim. Um, all right, so we're gonna kind of hop in here. So today, I don't know if everybody knows what we're working on, but we're actually gonna do the interior of the Great Hall from Harry Potter. So I have to admit something before we go a whole lot further. I, I have seen several Harry Potter movies. I think most of them. Um, I don't know if I've seen them all. I think there's some of towards the end that maybe I haven't haven't seen. Um, I read a couple of the books. I was actually given the first book, uh, The Sorcerer's Stone, as we call it here in the United States. I know that's not where it's called everywhere else because apparently we can't handle, what was it? Philosophers. philosophers. We, yeah. <laughs> Americans can't handle the idea of philosophy, so we have sorcerers. Um, I read that in a couple other books, and, and it was good. I just never, I never really dove in as deep as some people. So to compensate for that, here helping me on the other side of the monitor is Eric John. Say hi, Eric. Hello, everyone. Eric knows a fair bit more about Harry Potter than I do. He was excited to have this. Not that I wasn't excited. I like modeling anything in SketchUp. But he was excited about this topic. So we brought him in, and he's going to help answer questions. And uh, when, my, when my nerd level falls low, he's going to help pump it back up. So he'll, he'll throw out facts or information or, you know, when I go, uh, Horcrux, he's going to go, yeah, stupid. This is what it is. So oh, yeah. <laughs> he'll help. <laughs> so hopefully this goes good. Hope you guys enjoy this. Whoa, Bradley Designs right here in Colorado. Hello, Bradley Design. All right. So that's enough uh, mumbling about what we're going to do. Let's do some of the things we're going to do. Um, before we hop in and start modeling, though, I did want to throw a couple things out here. Thing number one, Basecamp 2020 has officially launched its website. So 
You can see here, this is our beautiful new website. Go to 3dbasecamp.sketchup.com to find all, all the information you need about Basecamp 2020, which is going to be in Vancouver. That's going to be a lot of fun. So you can come up here, you can, you can learn about uh, what it is. If you've never been to Basecamp before, this will give you kind of a snapshot. As we get information together, this is where we'll put it. So once we get our speakers signed up, we start getting uh, some of our classes, that kind of thing, we'll put that up here. And of course, you have the ability to come in here, register, and buy your tickets right now. There's actually an early bird special going on now through the beginning of February. So you can save a little money if you know this is something that you're going to want to go to when September 2020 comes around. And if you've been before, you already know you do want to go. If you haven't been before, then you have to come read this website and find out that you also want to go. So it's a great time. It, it is the, uh, the best place for a SketchUp enthusiast to spend a week in September. So I just want to throw that out there because this just went live. Um, and a couple other things. So before we start, I did, as usual, start a topic on our forum. So if you go to SketchUp, for, excuse me, if you go to forums.sketchup.com, um, you can actually hop in here. There's a live modeling Hogwarts Great Hall topic. Um, if you guys have some good reference images or information that uh, can help me with the model, go ahead and throw it up here and uh, that way I can grab those images. It's a great way to pass information back and forth, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and as I was going through the forums this morning, so I always go up here, actually go through the forums most morning. If you're not on the forums, SketchUp forums, it's a great spot to get information, see what people are doing in SketchUp, get help, that kind of thing. But I just go up there to hang out and see what people are doing. My favorite section is the gallery because, as you guys know, I kind of threw out a challenge to everybody to 3D model every day. Model something just for fun. Keep, your, keep the juices rolling and, and maybe not, if you use SketchUp for work, try to model something just kind of a fun thing on the side. Model a car, model a whatever. Um, and so I always like to hop in the gallery and see what people are modeling. And I just had to call this one out because it was so cool. Oops, I lost it, but um, where'd it go? Right here. This Corinthium column model, um, Forum Museum Alsamar. I don't know if you're on the forum or if you're on the stream. If you are, you should say hello so we can recognize you. But this was an awesome model. I just I saw this and I'm like, oh. Not only do I want to model it, but I want to congratulate him because this is an amazing looking... Oh, it's Alejandro. I guess I could have worked that. No, I could not have. Alejandro Soriano. I don't know what the Mars is for, Alejandro, but great job. This is, uh, this is looking awesome. Uh, it's super cool. So yeah, Alejandro's a guy to keep an eye on. Uh, check out the forum if you don't already spend time there and uh yeah great job really love this this is, it was such a cool thing to see this morning all right so again again i say let's get back to modeling but i mean we're only we're only six minutes in i'm not not dragging my feet too much or anything like that but yeah great job um all right i'm gonna leave this up here in case we want to come back to it and uh, i'm gonna come take a peek at some of the reference images i i grabbed for this um so I, I went back and forth. I chose to do the, I want to do the interior for a couple reasons. One is we do a lot of uh, outsides of things. We model, you know, exteriors of objects, solid objects, that kind of things. I don't, we haven't really spent time doing the interior of anything before. Um, I liked the Great Hall because it was kind of, it's a fun thing to do, but it's also, uh, it's a nice big open space to work inside of. So I started going through and trying to look for some pictures. So this is one that I found that I really liked. So one of the things I noticed about the Great Hall, and uh, Eric can back me up here, um, they use the Great Hall for lots of things because it seems to change. So they have pictures where it's used as a dining hall, kind of a study place. They, when, when classes come in, mm -hmm. they, they use that for like the sorting hat thing and everything. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of weird because what's in the hall actually changes one image to the next. So some of them, they have these uh, really cool, I don't know what these are called, these statues holding flaming pits, basically. <laughs> really high-end wizard candelabra things. 
Um, and then other ones they'll have like portraits up. So it actually changes, the same space changes, which is you know something you can do if you're a wizard, I guess. Um, but it did make it hard to get good reference photos because they were all different. Um, so I did find a couple that I think will work. So, so one thing I found is I found some people who kind of made their own plans. This is good. Again, nothing's to scale or anything like that. We're going to have to, to, to kind of figure that out. But this was nice because it did show, you know, where the windows were, four windows on either side of the fireplace, uh, this stepped up section in the back that has, has this bay window on the door. So this is a good, we'll use this as kind of a 2D reference for where everything goes. And then I found this, which was really cool. This was actually from uh, uh, the Deathly Hollows. And this is a plan of how they actually built the Great Hall. So I remember seeing this on a documentary or behind the scenes or something like that. In the books, they talk about, I don't know, isn't like the star outside sky or something visible through the ceiling? Um, I think it depends. It probably changes, like it's everything an else. Place, so. That's right. Yeah, it changes. <laughs> Can't nail it down. <laughs> but what they did in the uh, the movies is they actually built it. It was still big. I mean, this is this is this is what they actually built, and then using CGI, they made it look like this. So it's actually not as tall as it looks in uh, in the movies. The ceiling is actually CG. So this actually only gets built to right about here, and then they they just use computer stuff to computer stuff you know <laughs> whatever 3d modeling and magic and stuff uh to build that second half which i thought well, this is this is kind of a cool image but we can actually use this again not a lot of dimensions on here there's a couple but this this will give us reference to how big everything is and uh <clears throat> maybe give us a little bit of that profile of the building piecing together information from what i could find um and then of course i got a couple more reference photos this one is actually from uh the theme park, I think. It's like a museum piece where they have a bunch of different, um, oops, sorry, forgot my head's in the way. Um, they recreated, they recreated it, I think, so they actually show, or it might be the original set, something like that. Um, but a couple of these were, were shot there. Um, like this incredibly low quality image that'll give us a lot of, this will be a good one to have. <laughs> But this is the only one I could find that actually showed the fireplace very well. As you guys can tell, I'm, I'm, I'm dying for some, some great reference photos if you happen to have any laying around. Anybody who's been to Harry Potter World and taken pictures of the Great Hall, that would be cool. Um, this one, you can see what I was talking about. There's where it actually uh, throws the, there's the studio lighting up there. You can see where it stops and the imaginary world takes over. But. Yeah, so I think we have enough references. Oh, and this was the only picture I could find of the back. So this is the entrance. This is where you would enter the Great Hall from. Really cool door. So this will be a fun thing to model, uh, even if we just kind of start from this reference and kind of build out the detail from there. Um, oh, and there's another fire, super low quality fireplace image. So that's what we got to work from. So we're going to piece together these uh, kind of separate pieces, and we're going to put together a, uh, some representation of the Great Hall. All right, um, so let's go ahead, and we will hop into SketchUp and start doing just that. I think what I might start by importing is the section image. So the one where we're looking down into the Great Hall. So that's the one that actually shows the arches and the heights. It does have a couple dimensions in it. So I figured I, those dimensions were not very good though. And they're, and they're really small and really light. I don't even know if we can read them, but we'll try. Um, they have a little, little uh, factoid here. Elaine mentioned that the Dining Hall of Hogwarts is the only room of the castle filmed at Oxford University. Now that's cool. Yeah, if you go look up where some of those sets are, they're all over the place. They, they, oh, good morning, Perth in Australia. That's cool. It's, it's a morning thing for you guys instead of a evening thing for a lot of people. That's got to be pretty early morning, though. Um... So yeah, I'm gonna come in here, file, and we will import that section image. Uh, I don't remember which one it is, so 
me my icons. Here we go. All right, so I'm just going to bring this in nice and big. So one of the things I've talked about this before, when I import, um, I do want to make sure that under Preferences, OpenGL, I have this box checked, use maximum texture size. So that means when you pull these images in, it's going to be as big as it can make it, which is still not super high resolution, so it's still hard to read this stuff sometimes. So speaking of which, that's how many feet wide <laughs> the Great Hall is. It's roughly many feet in inches. Um, let's, play, let's pull up the original image and see if we can see anything any, any better than that. Any more detail. All right, let's pull this up here. And, uh, oh, man. Whew. I'm thinking that's about 40 feet or 49 feet. <laughs> yeah. Google says 14 feet high, 11 feet wide. I don't buy that. Wait, no, that's. I just a, can't put four. four that's a Lego. Oh. <laughs> that's not gonna work. <laughs> Scaled Lego model. No, well, there's four. There's working. four big tables placed across there. So it's got. Which I mean, they're in there kind of tight. If you look at it, it doesn't look very comfy, or it looks a little maybe too cozy. Um, not a whole lot of extra space. Does anybody have that? Who, who's, got, who's got details out there? Who can tell me how wide the Great Hall is? How about these vertical dimensions? Man. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. All right, well, I'm just going to have to guess. I'm going to say it looks like it's 49 feet. We'll see what, we'll see what that does to our drawing. All right, we'll hop in. So I'm going to draw a line right here on this terribly low quality image I got. We'll do this. We'll 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 scale this to 40. We'll scale to 40 feet and see how Mark uh, measures up to this fella right here. So I'd like to draw a line if you guys haven't. I do this a lot, but I put a line in there. That way I can check a dimension afterwards. You can arbitrarily just pick two points and enter the scale for that, that distance. But by having a line here, um, I can actually make sure I can go back and rescale off that exact same geometry later on. So I'll click from here to here. I'm going to say 40 feet. And we will resize that. All right. And I'm going to take this, put it upright. I'm going to slide it over, put this little scale guy right next to Mark. That might be about the right size. All right, so I couldn't, so I was, I was thinking it might be a 4.0, this might be a 4.9. So just to check, let's go ahead and let me scale this to 49 and see how, that, how Mark measures up then. Nope, that wasn't it. All right, so we will say that that is 40 feet. Awesome. All right, so what I wanted to do here primarily was kind of get uh, just the profile. Um, basically, this, this shape right here. Um, somebody's calling me during live streaming. What the heck, man? Come on. Um, all right, so I'm going to go there, I'm going to take this up to here, I'm going to find the center point, which would be at 20 feet, I'm going to take that all the way up to here, and then I'm going to throw an arc, like Okay, so that is half the profile of my great hall. So I'm gonna take that right now. I'm gonna use rotate and just flip a copy over here. All right, so that is 
like I said, the profile of my great hall. I'm not done with this image. I do have some other details I want to pull off of it at a later point, including these, these smaller arches here, um, this relief here for the window, so it doesn't just, it's not just set right up against the inside, it does set back in, so I'll copy this geometry later. Um, I'll keep that off to the side. And I'm gonna do this, I always, do, <laughs> this is something I always go, you know what I should have done when I imported that? I'm gonna take this image right here, I'm gonna put it back where it was, and I'm gonna put that on a layer called ref. Uh, that way I can just toggle that image on and off as, as I uh, work through here. And actually may end up with multiple reference images as well. Um, so to run through that again, Mohammed is asking how I scaled that. What I did was I put a line along a known dimension. So that bottom dimension was 40 feet, so I drew a line on top of the image. And then I used the tape measure. Uh, when you first come into tape measure, you're in this mode where it's going to try to put in uh, those reference lines. So to get out of that, you just hit, look down at the bottom. You have a, a toggle key. On Mac, it's option. I believe it's control. And that'll actually toggle that little plus back on and off. So I turned it off, and then by clicking one point to another, it will first tell you what that dimension is. Immediately before you do anything else, just type in the dimension you want it to be, and it will rescale the drawing at that point. Um, Ooh, somebody says we've got a problem with the mic. Marconi, I think you've said that before. Can, can, can other people hear us? This will be the test. Because I can hear myself just fine, so I, I, don't know if, I don't know if to believe you or not. Can anybody else hear us? Good. Um, nobody else has said anything, so I'm assuming it's okay, but you know what happens when you make an assumption? Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> yeah, get, getting a bunch of feedback that it sounds good, so, uh, and that is on YouTube, so same place you're coming from. Um, you may try to uh, close and rejoin or something like that, but it sounds like everybody else can hear us. So I'll try to talk louder so you can hear it. <laughs> All right. So, you know, Michael, I've heard that before. People say it's not accurate, and it's actually as accurate as you want it to be as long as you're not going like sub-millimeter. SketchUp is made for architecturally initially. It's used for all kinds of stuff, but as long as you're staying larger than a fraction of a millimeter, uh, it's as accurate as you want it to be. And of course, those as you want to be is what, something you can set in model info under units. You can actually choose how you want to see things dimensioned. Uh, I'm in my architectural template right now, so I have architectural turned on at 16th inch accuracy. Um, I could be more or less accurate if I'd like. Uh, Mohammed wants to know how you scaled the image. Yeah, that's what we just we just ran through that. Um, so hopefully that was okay. Hopefully that made sense, Mohammed. Um, sounds like everybody's saying it sounds pretty good. I didn't, you know. <sighs> Bj Beatty just pointed out that it's Friday the thirteenth. I didn't even like think about it, you know. And and I guess. I don't know. Is that is that like a is that a recognized day in the Harry Potter world, Eric? They I mention it. I don't think so. No, that's a different uh, movie universe. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I just figured there's got to be some sort of like there might be. I don't know, there's black cats. I don't know sure. luck something. Anyhow, <laughs> off topic. All right, <clears throat> um, let's get back on this. So I'm going to import another image now. So I'm going to say import. I'm going to keep it used as image. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to grab this Great Hall plan. Again, I'm not, I'm not expecting anything out of any of these, nothing specific anyhow. I'm just using these as, as quick reference. So we're going to scale this one again. So the dimension I know is from this corner to this corner. So I'm going to scale it by drawing that line. Look at this. This, this confused me for a second. They got these little blue lines in here. I thought that was actually a selected geometry. <laughs> Just for half a second, my brain went, oh, don't forget to deselect that. Um, so what I'm going to want to do is take this line, and I'm going to turn on x-ray so I can see that line a little better. 
I'm gonna take this line and tell it that I want that to be 40 feet. Now, if I just did that, if I did it right now, it would rescale my entire drawing. So that means this right here would get scaled up along with it. I only wanna scale this drawing and this line. So what I'm gonna do is right click and I'm gonna make it a group now. So by making it a group, I can double click to enter the group and now I'm gonna go grab my tape measure tool, tell it click here, click here, type in 40 feet, hit enter. And now rather than resizing the entire model, it's gonna ask me, do you wanna resize the active group? And here's, I'm gonna say yes, and just that portion of the, the model gets resized. Now I can grab this, I'm gonna grab it by this corner, line that corner up with our geometry we have right now. I'm going to, I'm gonna turn off x-ray so I can see this a little better. Use rotate, rotate this around here. Oh, look at that, lines right up. So now I could take that and I could pull that all the way down to 132 feet exactly. Kind of seems like that's something I got something right. <laughs> all right, so that doesn't include this, uh, this bay window here, but I'm gonna select right here and delete and look into our great hall. Whew. Looks good. I'm gonna triple click and reverse that because we're actually, that's the portion we're gonna work on is the inside, not the outside. All right, um, I'm gonna do something that uh, I'm really not much of a fan of. And I'm gonna save my drawing. Nice. <laughs> it's a thing I have learned. Um, so we're just gonna call this the Great Hall. And with that, all right, it's from here, pretty much takes care of itself. Okay, um, I'm thinking, so uh, I'm gonna come in here, I actually don't need this line anymore. Actually, I can explode this group and then I can take this image right here and for right now, I'm gonna just throw it on the same ref layer because I don't need it right this second. So now if I turn on ref, I'll actually get both pieces, which is probably probably good, that works, right. that works I think. Okay, so. What I gotta figure out next is what to do. <laughs> so I'm thinking, so if I look here, you can see these bays repeat themselves. One, two, three, four here, four here, and then over here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, so I can model this one of two ways I can the question is basically how to model negative space. I'm gonna slide this one back along the green axes. Um, so do I come on the inside and push this in to the wall, or do I come outside and model this as a solid chunk and just append it on from the outside? I like that I have this shape right here, so I think I'm gonna start by modeling this as a solid piece that I think I'll push pull all the way up. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that. Um, so let's see about how big this is. So I got that right about, right about five feet. So I'm gonna make this as a component. I'm gonna, I'm trying to think of how to do this because what I wanna do here is I wanna actually take this, make it once, and distribute it around the outside of the hall. And then after they're all laid in place, I wanna look and see if that's gonna work or if I need to make adjustments. By making a component, I can go in and make changes later on. <clears throat> Excuse me. I make changes later on and I can actually you know, change all of them at once. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna make something that looks like this. How far is that? six foot nine, that seems like it could be correct. I'm gonna come this way, 2.5 feet. Come back this way, two and a half feet. Come this way. You're just coming out of those nice round dimensions, which I really thoroughly enjoy. Again, based on the fact that we're working off of a low quality image that I downloaded from somewhere. <laughs> We've got a, a few questions here. All right. Uh, Andy wants to know, is there an extrude tool? So the thing that 
most people call extrude is what we call push pull. And that's where you just grab a surface and you grab it like you have it, like there's a handle on it, and you just pull it into 3D space. And that can be used on any closed surface. As long as it's a single face. If it's a curved face or something like that, you have to use an extension. And uh, Michael uh, asked, does it uh, scale ratio after? I think uh, he was asking when you were blowing up the image there. Yeah, so I was scaling by a specific dimension, but I could have used the scale tool where I could put in a, uh, a scale number. So one being 100%, 1.5 being 1.5%. I could have actually scaled that way if I wanted to increase or decrease the size a specific amount based on where it was originally. I was scaling everything to a specific dimension, so I just used a different tool. But that is the, that's an option as well. All right, I'm gonna call this two foot two. Let me bring that back. <laughs> One foot two. I'm looking at my dimensions, so down, oh, that's what I was gonna turn on. Um, I realized I forgot to turn on my key caster. So now you guys can actually see what it is I'm doing and typing. All right, so there, I thought something was selected again with this blue over here. Uh -oh. All right, there is half of my column. So I'm gonna grab that right now. I'm gonna hit the right arrow key to constrain to the red axes and use rotate to flip this over like that. All right, now I'm gonna take this before I use push pull or shoot. So right now, this is raw geometry. If I was to grab push pull and pull this up, I would actually be breaking this geometry over here. I don't want to do that yet. Um, so I'm going to grab this. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say make component. And I know it's not technically a column, but I'm going to call it a column. All right. Now what I can do. Um, I'm gonna hide this one right here. I'm gonna take this component. Oh, that got weird. I'm gonna, what's going, <laughs> it's not, it's not uh, snapping to the face like I was expecting. All right, I'm gonna grab this by that middle point. I think I grabbed a weird spot to reference from. I'm gonna put this right here. All right, now if I look at what this dimension is here, so I'm gonna see what happens if I take this, I'm gonna use move, so I'm gonna click a point, hit option to make a copy, and I'm gonna copy it over five feet. I'm gonna copy it over five, nope, that's not five feet. That is from here to here. So we'll try 14 and a half feet. This way, 14.5 feet, enter. Ooh, that looks pretty good. So right now, I'm still in the copy command. I haven't done anything or changed anything. So I can tell it that I want it to copy that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So if I just type X8 and hit enter, dang, that looks, that's, that's pretty nice. I need one more of those columns over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this one and I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna use these columns I put in place like this, from here, option, to here. So you can use that same, same spacing. Um, I know, I'm not a big fan, Bradley's, thank you for, for reminding everyone that math is a shortcoming of mine, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, yeah, 1.5 would be one and a half times whatever is currently scaled. So yeah, uh, did I say that wrong? I may have said that wrong. Um, all right, I'm gonna take these now. I wanna put a copy of these in this exact spacing around on the other side of the hall. To do this, I'm gonna use rotate. So I'm gonna draw a line right down the middle of the hall. I'm gonna hit rotate and I'm gonna use the center point, the middle point of that line I just drew Pull my line up here for reference, option, and then just spin it around like that and drop it right there. If we come look, ooh, look how nicely all that lines up. Okay, so 
I'm going to go with that. I'm going to say that is exactly what I want as of right now. And I'm going to enter one of these components. It doesn't matter which one, since their components are all linked together. And I'm just going to pull that up to right here where the arch starts. All right. I'm going to triple click on this geometry right here and I'm going to make this into a component and I'm just going to call this my shell. <laughs> there is no spell check in naming a component. So let's try S-H-E-L-L. -L. Let's see how that works. All right. So what that's going to do, when I'm, when I'm all done actually, there's a good chance that I really won't be using any of the geometry from this original shell. So this is really put together just to use as reference as I build the rest of it out. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on its own layer, which I'm going to call, oh boy, shell. And now I can actually toggle that on and off so I can actually look and see how, how my hull's looking as I put it together. What do you think, Mark? Yeah. Mark never tells him I'm doing a good job, but sometime I can tell he's proud of me. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Okay. Um, so that looks good for right now. Um, what to do next? Let's go, let's fill in these windows real quick. Um, let's do that. I'm going to make a new component that's going to be one of these windows. So I'm going to start by drawing. Uh, shape just on the ground like all right I'm gonna grab that make that a new component and then call this window because I'm feeling terribly creative apparently <laughs> all right I'm gonna take that and I'm also going to uh, option click here X7, one less than, nope, X8. There we go, and I can actually just delete this one. Well, actually, I won't delete that yet because I wanna grab these pieces, all of these pieces. The cool thing in SketchUp about selecting is selections are uh, persistent. So as long as I don't go select and right click and, or, or click off into nowhere, they're gonna stay selected. So I can do things like turn layers on and off, draw reference geometry, all while I have a selection without fear of losing it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn shell on. The one thing that I, you have to be conscious of in select is selecting doesn't enter the undo stack, selecting and deselecting. So if I go in and do a bunch of careful selections, and then hit escape or something like that and deselect them, I can't hit undo and reselect. So just something to be conscious of. There's a lot of things you can do while something is selected, but that is not an undoable, uh, it's not an undoable thing. Deselecting is not undoable. So right now, I have my window component selected. I'm gonna put this, I don't know why I deleted it, and put my reference line for the middle right here. And then just like I did before, I go to rotate, click, and make a copy, flip it around. Whoop. 180 degrees. All right, and I'll turn my shell back off again. So there I have windows. Just to, to back up a couple, uh, we did have a question. This always comes up, so this is something we're used to. This right here on my left hand is a 3D mouse. It is 3D Connections Space Mouse Enterprise. So uh, if you go to 3dconnection.com, you can see their uh, array of 3D mice. This happens to be the one that uh, they sent me and it is awesome. So the 3D mouse for one thing is what's doing all this nice smooth animation. Uh, I always say as a SketchUp user we get used to this. No problem. My brain's ready for it. Not everybody watching is ready for it. So that's why this nice smooth 3D connection is nice. Um, it also has a uh, programmable buttons, so a lot of my shortcuts are over here, so I don't have to, the one downside to a 3D mouse is, you know, most of us use SketchUp like this, right? Left hand on the keyboard, right hand on the mouse, go from there. 
by putting your hand over here on the mouse, on the 3D mouse to, to animate, you lose that uh, shortcut key hand. By having programmable buttons around the puck, I can actually do most of my shortcuts with my pinky, thumb, other fingers, uh, and I don't have to take my hand back over here. So, cool product. Uh, not a requirement for SketchUp. You do not have to have one by any means, but if you uh, do get your hands on one, you may actually find yourself inputting quicker, uh, and it's great for presentation. So if you ever have to go out and show people your work, that kind of thing, a 3D mouse is an awesome way to navigate through. Uh, and, and I'm just saying that because I've, I actually have no connection to 3D connection, uh, <laughs> the company. I just really like their products, so I'm, I'm a big, big fan of them. I think it shows great too. All right, so back to modeling. Um, I'm going to unhide that drawing and I'm going to slide it over so it laps over one of the windows. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna take this window right here and modify its geometry so it kinda matches more like what this, this is right here. I'm running into a problem because my model's in my way. Um, I could do a couple things. I could grab some of this geometry like this and hide it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in a section temporarily. Um, grab a section tool. I'm going to put in section one and I'm going to move that back so it's just past this column right there. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to hide my selection. When a selection plane is actually visible and active, uh, it's clickable. <laughs> so basically you have this kind of translucent film between you and what you're trying to click on. Every time you click, you're just picking the, the uh, section plane. So by turning it off like that, I, be, I will be able to get in here and make the changes I need uh, to this geometry without the section plane being in the way. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple things here. First thing is I'm gonna pull this up to right here. And then, how do I want to do this? Um, I'm going to grab this line right here and use option to offset it to there. And then I'm going to grab this surface right here and I'm going to move it up. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm running into an issue because of this, this jog right here. Um, that's okay, I'll fix that. Yeah, I'll just use push-pull. So I was asking about extrude earlier. That is our extrude. Um, all right, so that's the general. I'm gonna grab this line right here and slide it out like that. All right, I'm close. All right, with that done, I'm gonna go to Outliner and I'm gonna grab my section plane I'm actually going to erase it, delete it. I don't want it right now. And I'm going to rehide this reference. All right, because I got to come in here and I got to do a little cleanup. So, what I can do, I come back into this component. And what I want is this. That should go all the way across. So what's happening is because it steps inside a little bit, I'm getting this extra geometry I'm losing. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna draw a line down in this crack right here, draw a line up here, and there we go. So there's lots of, I could have extruded through, I could use solid tools or intersect. Sometimes just drawing a couple lines is the easy way to do it. All right, if I come to the outside, I have a similar issue. I don't have details what the outside looks like, so that means anytime we're talking about the outside, I get to make up whatever I want. So I'm gonna grab right here, extend that across like that, grab right here, extend that across like that, and there we go. That's the bottom of our window. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go check a reference image real quick. Let's save. Always a good idea. Come here. Come here. I don't know if, I don't know how many people here were there for it, but I did model a good portion of uh, Notre Dame, <laughs> a solid hour plus before losing it all. So 
Um, you think I'd be better after th having that happen too, but it's, it's still a struggle for me. So yeah, so this is kind of the thing we got. You can see right here, you can see it slopes up and that kind of cuts out. I think that's that's good enough. That that works for what what we got. Um, you can see this though. This is this is something that, that we didn't get off of either of our reference plans. Uh, yeah, I know. Marvin was there. He remembers. And then James laughed at me. So <laughs> we do have an arc arch here. So at some point when we come in here, we'll actually uh, fill that in too. Right now, I'm just doing the the flat stuff, and we'll work our way up. Um, so the next thing is going to be to put some windows in here. So I want to see if I have anything that shows the actual window. There we got a little bit of one. I got a lot of detail this end window. That's not going to be a problem. But man, these side windows. All right, I don't know if, if anybody comes across and has a, uh, a good, whoops. Just put my computer asleep there. Um, anybody has a good picture of the window and wants to throw it up in the forum, that would be awesome because this is what I got to work off of, which I can make. I can make this work. We knew this. Um, so it looks like each window is made up of nine sections. Um, so I need to figure out how high this is. I should have that. In this drawing right here, yeah, see this shows one, two, this shows four sections. Oh, well, hey, look at this. Never mind, I got a sweet detail right here. I got this. I'm gonna be a piece of cake. All right, so I actually can trace this right here um, just to kind of get my initial volume in there, and then we'll go in and detail out the windows according to this image right here. Cool. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, unhide that last thing because we should. This is this should be to scale as well. So let's see. If I pull this over here. Yep. Oh man, love it when a plan comes together. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm trying to remember exactly how big I made this. Five foot two. Okay. So I'm going to put a line right here that is five foot two. Whoops. Five, five foot two. We did not know what to do with five colon two because that's not a number. All right. And then I'm going to put a line at the middle up to here. And I'm going to draw some more lines on here. This is where the arch starts. So actually, I'm going to only draw half of this too. So come right here, come up to here. There we go. I'm going to turn on X ray. Um, one, two, three, four. It looks like they're even. So here's what I'm going to do I'm going to select this line right here, right click, and click on divide. And I'm going to have it divide to four and see how close that gets me. Not really, because the top ones are a little bit different size. So I'll come to right here in the middle. And now if I select this and divide, divide that, there we go, to three points. So now I know that each of these sections is exactly the same size. That's really what I was getting at right there. All right. Um, so this arch right here, I can't use my standard arc because my standard arc is a uniform arc. It's always, uh, there's different definitions for it. This arc actually has kind of a, uh, I, Dave's back asking me if I use large image splitter. I didn't again, Dave, but you know what? It's okay because this is an absolutely terrible image to begin with. So I'm actually not missing anything by not having pulled it in at a larger quality than what large image splitter would have done. So we went and looked at the reference image and it is just as bad, if not worse than what's already here. 
Um, yes, Robert Coolidge mentioned that this is a Gothic arch right here. Um, sorry, I'm gonna drink coffee and read for a second. All right, back to work. Hello, India, BAM Civil Engineering. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do instead, so like I said, I can't put a standard arc here because it's gonna give me that uniform arc. I, so instead, I'm just gonna use Bezier curves. Um, there's a couple different extensions out there for Bezier. Uh, I just use the standard one from the SketchUp team, not because, not for any reason other than it's just kind of what I've always used, really. All right, so there we go. So Bezier lets you pick two points and then use control points to shift that around a little bit. Um, are you in Maine, Dave? Is that what you're, you're getting at? I think I saw that, that on uh, some form of social media. And then I got growled at by Ace Wright. Grr. Oh, grr ate work. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so we got our, our uh, reference right here. I'm gonna take this right here, divide it into three, and then just take that line all the way up. All right. So, what I have just created is the grid for our large window. Uh, when I look at this right now, I see three pieces we need to develop. So this one repeats one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. This is all the same geometry repeated. Up here, we have two that are the same and then a third one that's different. So there's actually only three things I have to create to finish this window. Um, I take all of that, I'm just gonna slide it over right now. Um, and this is where the detail is leaving me wanting. Um, but I think if we hop over into this image, we can kind of get a better idea of what's going on here. And again, remember, this is what, I think this is what we talked about where, I don't know, this could be because it's a museum piece and it's not fully accurate, but uh, we're gonna pretend there's three of these they may be CGI in the real world, I don't know. It looks like in this one, look at that, it actually has the same arch across all three and then this higher part is a separate piece. I like that idea. Yeah, it looks like, oh, I'm sorry, same thing here. So that means what I can actually do, it kind of looks like I got something like this going on. If I take this piece right here, This is cool because this means I only have to actually make two pieces. I have to make this window and this window, and then I can just copy them, which is super cool. So what I'll do is I'm gonna take this one right here, slide it over, how far, I wonder how far, uh, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna turn on x-ray. All right, so, looks like I'm gonna start by offsetting that much. And I don't know what I'm doing right now, so <laughs> if I tune out just for a second, uh, like I just did, literally. Um, it's cool, we're cool, it's cool. All right, it kind of looks like, again, if I jump over here, we got a little bit of like a shelf coming out. It's not continuous though, you see, it does look like it breaks at each window. So I'm gonna kind of go for that. Um, um, Boz asking what version I am modeling and I will say, this is my standard answer is, I'm modeling my version of the Great Hall. <laughs> Not to be confused with anything that was actually ever used or created in the real world. Um, 
I'm working off of the uh, images I was able to find. Oops. So I don't really know exactly what which movie they lined up with. So I'm going to start by putting something like this across. And I'm going to pull that in. So pull it an inch on either side. And then, ah, Marvin's back. Um, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to use my arc to place an arc like this. Sorry, I'm modeling an x-ray, and that's, that's never really a great thing to do. I'm going to take that all the way up like that, this all the way up like this. So much making stuff up. OK, I'm going to drag this down like this. And I think what I'm going to do, pull this out a little bit more, maybe a half inch. And then I think I'll kind of do this. That looks fancy. Uh, I'm going to hide that line. And I'm going to grab this piece and this piece and I guess this piece and this piece. And I'm going to mirror that using an extension called Curic Mirror. Um, this is one of many many, well, many, many being three or four uh, mirroring extensions out there. Uh, it just happens to be the one that I started using, really enjoy using it, and I'm going to just use that to mirror my selected geometry and flip that back over to this side. And then I can get rid of my little flag, my little reference geometry that I used right there. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of this right now and I'm going to make it a component and I'm going to call this window A. I'm going to grab that window A and I'm going to stick it right here and I'm going to copy it. Alt. Oop. 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 There we go. Alt. X2, and I'm going to grab those three, nope, grab those three components, not those three surfaces underneath, and then I'm going to grab them here, option, copy it up, also X2, and you know what, I'm going to do that right now, I'm going to put another one up here, and then I'm going to grab, well, actually I'm not going to make any changes yet, at the point where these designs start to deviate from this design, I will make these three into uh, a separate component. Right now, I'm just going to leave them up there because I may make some changes. All right, so this is looking all right. Um, I'm going to grab, is this a component? No, this wasn't. I'm going to grab all of this. And I'm going to make it into a new component. And I'm going to call this component window assembly because why not all right uh, I'm gonna take this now grab a copy of it and I'm gonna throw it in place right here Sometimes it's cool when you put pieces together and just go, mm hmm that's good. Um, I am going to do this. I'm going to double click in here, double click into one of these. I have a, 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 a shortcut key map to hide rest of model. Um, it's normally view, component, edit, hide rest of model. That gets rid of everything that's not the component I have. 
You see, when I high-dress a model, I still see all of the copies of this component that I'm working with. If I wanted to, I could go to View, Component, Edit, and hide similar components. Um, I don't have a shortcut key attached to that because I don't use that command very often. And um, most times, I'd say 9 out of 10 times, I actually want to see the impact that change to one component has on the rest. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to shift erase this line right here and this line right here. What that's going to do is make that look like one complete piece all the way up. I'll do the same thing down here. Shift erase this and shift erase this. That's going to make it look like I have one vertical piece running all the way up. Oop, I got to do it at the top too. Shift erase and I am using shift instead of uh, option or control because I don't want to smooth it. If you s these, these lines are uh, representing 90 degree angles of faces. Two faces are coming together like that and I'm getting that edge. If I smooth it, I'll end up with weird gray shadows in there. So I'm intentionally hiding using shift erase rather than, uh, oh, it's all coming together. So the nice thing is because I made each of these in individual components, I have to go in here and make my little uh, fancy detail thingy. That is actually what they call it in Gothic architecture, in case you guys didn't know. This is a fancy detail thingy. Um, I only have to do it once now. So I can actually build this into one arch and it'll show up in all of them. Um, speaking of which, I actually don't want, well, here, let me go look, let me go look at some images. Yeah, this is significantly different. So I'm going to grab these and I'm going to say make unique. So what make unique does, it says keep that as a component but separate it from the original component. If you do a multiple select, so in this case I selected three components and I say make, make unique, actually those three components become a new instance. So it's not like, so I had uh, uh, window A is what I called it. This isn't going to say window A1, window A2, window A3. They're all going to be called window A1. So I'm going to say make unique and I'm going to immediately head over here to my entity info and call this window B. Enter. So now I can see, you can see what I'm talking about. Here's window A, here's window B, window B, window B. So components, knowing how components work, oh, it's, it's good stuff. It's something you definitely want to do. Um, yeah, glad I could throw that out there. The, uh, actually, where, where did Mr. Coolidge go? He could probably tell us what, what this, the actual name is here. That's what you get for calling out uh, the type of arch. <laughs> Filigree, that sounds right. All right, now, I got to be honest. Um, Especially, wait, let's, let's, let's hop over here. Um, especially after looking at this, I'm not going to go to this level of detail today. I do want to get a good portion of this Great Hall modeled in the next few hours. So my filigree may be left lacking when compared to what Alejandro did with this model. We're going we're gonna to sprinkle a little filigree. We're not going to like fully marinate. So. We're, we're going to get the feel, the, the look and feel of some filigreeing. Um, <laughs> Daryl Hansen wants you to save. I think that's a good idea. You, Daryl's on it. Thank you, guys. I'm still looking for, there may be an addition into Restream, which is our streaming software, where I can hook my Control S up to, like, a web service somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and if enough people type in save, yeah. it just automatically happens. Um, I'm sure it's out there, right? That's got to happen. It's like voting. Oh. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, Shell Raider pointed out that the actual technical term is not filigree or thingy, but thingamajig. Mm -hmm. So, my bad. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's crank on here. All right. Um, so this is actually the full profile. This is sick. Um, this is cool because so this upper window is actually just going to be a half of our lower window right here that we'll be able to bring back in. Very cool. And then we'll follow the arch up and they'll put the arches this way. Oh, this is going to be cool. All right, let's talk eat more modeling. Um, 
I still don't have a good idea of what this looks like, so um, I'm gonna, anybody? anybody? If anybody has can, is able to track down a decent picture of this window, that would be cool, because it kind of looks like we got a little bit of an arc with maybe some circly things underneath it. I'm gonna throw something in there that kind of looks like it, maybe. But uh, yeah, if anybody has any detail, we can we can make it better. All right, so I'm gonna go into one of these. I'm going to start by sticking an arc, that's just standard arc, straight across like this. Nope, didn't make it. All right, I'm gonna start with a line. How about that? That's better. On axes, draw an arc straight across. Pull that up to a half circle. And I'm gonna grab that half circle and I'm gonna move it straight up so it touches the top right there. I don't I don't ever try to like I guess I could do math. I could have taken this dimension, divided it in half, and then or put a line there in the middle, or I don't know. I could have done something. Putting it down at the bottom, just slapping it in place seemed seemed easier. <laughs> I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pull this out a little ways. Um Push pull this out into the side like that. And then I'll just go ahead right now and intersect that and nope, missed it. Oh I missed I missed everything. That was all terrible. Undo, undo. Um, I'm gonna grab these surfaces. and these surfaces. I'm going to right click and intersect faces with selection. That breaks it. I'm coming back here and then I can also just get rid of this extra geometry. All right, there we go. That's what we got. Um, <laughs> yeah, to, to really to really filigree it up, I'd have to uh, get into sub D, you're right. Oh, somebody, oh, Eric, some guy named Eric found a, a picture. Oh, what a nice guy. So, sounds like a great guy. <laughs> um, yeah, so it looks like, so it's still uploading. Um, here, I'll pull it up on, I'll pull it up so everybody can see. Oh, I can do that. We, we can do that. We can make this happen. Um, I'm gonna stop talking about this now. Just start start making it. So we're looking at this right here. So it actually it is pretty simple. It looks like we got an arc right here. That arc actually looks like it comes out to the face of these columny things, and then we got a couple like circular cut-ins to uh, what looks like another arc. So I will show you how I interpret that. All right, so first thing is undo a couple more times. All right. So it looks like this actually more undos. All right. So I'm actually pull that out to here. Pull this out to here. Pull that out like that, which makes sense. I like that. That works. Um, and then from, all right, I'll put an arc from here to here. And then it looks like we got something like straight down. I'm going to take that and rotate it. Mm, oh, lower. Take 
that and rotate it 45 degrees and then bring that over 90 degrees all right so you may start disagreeing with me soon as to how I'm interpreting this but yeah but, but whatever I don't know that and then once again I will take that I'm a big fan of using mirror I don't know if you guys caught that yet but or I'm sorry using rotate to mirror 2d geometry so I only have to do things once all right so it's, it's a little fancier than that but this is gonna work for what we're doing I'm gonna pull that out halfway and that's what we're gonna go with all right, to finish clean this up, I am gonna, I'm going to triple click this and soften and smooth right quick. Got a couple spots where it was, I didn't like it. And then I'm going to do the same thing here to make these go across. I'm just going to say uh, shift erase here, shift erase here. It's going to give us that full running all the way across. I did so. All right, so I may have actually over softened and smooth. Let's bring that down just a, just a touch. And then uh, I am going to intersect these. All right. That looks, that looks like it'll work. Um, um, cool. That looks, that looks, that looks solidly acceptable. <laughs> All right. I'm going to work our way up now. Um, we got something similar going on here. Uh, it's a little further down, so I'm going to grab one of these, and it's it's down around here-ish. Um, and we have actually I need I need this geometry, so I'm going to copy that geometry. I'm going to click in here and I'm going to paste in place. Paste in place says put it back in the drawing where it was absolutely x, y, z coordinates uh, previously. Big fan of paste in place too. Actually, I'm a big fan of <laughs> ways to, to do rework without having to do too much work to do that rework. Um, all right, so one of the things this seems to do seems to do something like that. Just like I had that other piece that came out. And again, I'm just looking at that image that, that Eric posted and doing my best to make sense of it. Let me pull. that down like that and then I'm just gonna send some in here I'm gonna alt erase some stuff and and erase erase some stuff um, and then I'm gonna put in it's it's same thing it looks like a club from from playing cards almost there's probably some significance to this this thing That I'm gonna do the same same thing I did down below. Uh, just my my uh, reference is gonna be a little bit uh, different. My geometry is because this oops. more like that. All right, I'm gonna do a couple arcs just like I did before. all up 
you guys are probably noticing that I'm only building half of it. I'm actually using the whole thing just as reference so I can look at it and see how it looks. Uh, but I really only want half of it because I never want to, I mean, well, it's time consuming. Uh, oops. Oops, I missed it. Try that again. Um, anytime I can only model half of something, it's going to save me time in the end. So, all right, I'm going to grab all that. I'm going to soften that also. Ooh, yeah. Get rid of that extra line, extra line, and then do a little shift erasey. Why is that not disappearing? Um, I have not been great about cleaning up the backside of my model. I should, I should point out. Oh, I'm getting rid of the wrong, too much stuff, aren't I? Yep. Undo, undo. More? I think I need to do one more undo. All right, let's, let's do some intersecting before I start. Just going, going mad with the uh, the eraser. Don't clean up till you're ready to clean up. All right, intersect that with selection. I'll give me my brakes under there. And now I should be able to shift erase here, shift erase here. There we go. Um, and I'll clean this all up. Delete that. Delete that. Delete that. Delete that. All right. Um, got extra lines here too I can get rid of. Nope, not that one. Kidding. There we go. And then, I don't know what happens here. What happens at the top here? Oh, we got, we got additional uh, detail to add up here. That's just getting us the first part of it. We had a couple more arcs right here. This looks like some uh, some geometry is going to happen right here. So brace yourselves. All right. So if I take this line straight up, it looks like this shape right here comes over here, and then. What dimension did I offset this? Something arbitrary. <laughs> uh, it's midpoint. Yeah, it's about one inch and 13 sixteenths. Sweet. I'm going to take these two, offset about one and 13 sixteenths. Meh. <laughs> And I'm going to pull that out to the midpoint. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to take this geometry right here, grab it by the peak, kind of soften that point a little too much, copy that to right here. And I'll bring that out. Midpoint, same thing here. And then it looks like Sorry. There we go. Looks like the same thing happens again uh, right up here. So I'll grab this and this, offset that down exactly about 1 and 13 sixteenths. So I'll push pull that out. Oops. Push pull that out to the midpoint there too. All right. So that looks about what I got in the image. I have over here. Actually, the one thing that happens on here that on my reference image on the form that I'm not getting here is this. This looks like it actually comes down to a point and goes back up. So I might see what happens. Uh, how did I get this arch in here? Um, let's see, if I was to go, oh, here. Take an arc from here to the center point here. Just see see how this all looks. If I was to do something. Like 
That definitely looked bit more like what I got. So I'm gonna take that, I drew that on the outside of the component intentionally because I just was, was messing around, but I'm gonna cut it. Come in, come in. Paste that, nope, nope, paste in place, not just paste, the other, the other paste. Oops. And then I can actually rotate that, again, apparently rotate to copy things is, is kind of the thing to happen today. Over on that side, and then we can push that back like that. Offset from the inside arc. Um, I could have done that as well. I did want to make sure. See the problem. the The problem. The reason that the offset would not have worked is because look at look at it's obviously wider here than it is up here. No doubt because I did it wrong. I'm not 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 blaming anybody for that one, but me. But uh, in order to get that right, I had to, yeah, I had to do that. Um, all right, I'm going to come in here, actually get rid of this geometry, I'm gonna option, smooth this, and that. OK, about ready to be done doing windows. I don't do windows. All right. So there we go. So we have a container. This is our, our component in one container. In that container, we have a series of windows down here. And we also have a bunch of loose geometry. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to temporarily take all my 12 components and I'm going to hide them. Because I want to get rid of, well, first I need to clean up. I got some, some mess here. But I also want to get rid of a lot of this geometry. I don't like it when I have geometry and components in the same spot if I don't need them. Now I can go, actually, I'm just grab all this too. Make that into a new component. And I'm going to call those arch windows. All right. And I'm going to say edit unhide last, bring all my windows back, and there we go. Um, almost. So I'm going to do this, and then we will uh, we'll save it. So remember how I went in and I erased, because this component had that line, in the, that edge in the middle? Um, I erased it so that I have this nice, smooth-looking column. But that means on the edge right now, so if I look at this in place, I don't get a line to break it may not be a big deal. I may not care about that, but if I'm going for that full SketchUp look, this looks like something's wrong, something's overlapping, something's incorrect. So how do I get that back without having the lines break in the middle? What I can do is because this is a bigger component, I can come in here to this component and I'll just put a line oops, from that point. all the way up to here. And I'll do the same thing on the other edge. Grab there, straight all the way down to right there. Now when I come look at it, you can see I have that line like it's breaking. And I gotta go in, and I'm gonna turn off profiles. I like this look a lot better. This is just personal. You, you may like profiles, and that's cool. I like this look where all the lines are the same size. That's kind of my preferred way to uh, view a SketchUp model. Sweet. So that looks awesome. I'm going to take that now. I'm going to grab this whole thing. I'm going to Command X to cut it. I'm going to come into one of these things that I called my window. I got a little bit of geometry and clean up inside of here while I'm here. I'll throw that out. You know, this is the kind of cleanup. This, it's not required. I don't have to go in and delete these extra faces. But if you are doing any kind of work that's going to end up on the 3D warehouse or something like that, uh, your consumers will appreciate if you do that kind of cleanup. So it's not extra geometry poking through and that kind of thing. So good modeling practices. All right. And I'm going to hit Control-V. 
Oops, I'm backwards. All right, now I'm gonna grab this by that corner there, stick it right here. And what that's gonna do is actually give that to me all the way down because I stuck it again in the component. By adding it that one component, I got all my windows in there. Looking sweet. Awesome. Um, now, uh, actually, you know what? I think I actually want to bring that forward a little bit because it looks like that should be more like inside there a little bit. All right. So if we look at our reference image, hey, save. If we look at our reference image, these uh, arches here actually come out to full, full width uh, above this window. So it follows this arch right here with this shape. So here's what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna go to this right here. I'm gonna turn the rest of the model on and I'm gonna drop this down to maybe that point right there. I'm going to break this and this. And now what I want, um, is I want this line and this line. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna come out, come in here, and I'm gonna, ah, oh, dang. Oh, I'm gonna paste in place. That puts that line right there. I'm gonna come in here, go in this group again, go into this group, grab this line and this line, copy, exit back out, come into this line. I'm gonna paste in place again. And I'm going to grab these four lines I just grabbed. I'm going to use the weld extension to weld them into one piece. Now I can grab this. This is not going to be perfect. This is going to get messy, but um, I'm, I'm still visualizing right now. Um, so with this selected, I'm just going to say, follow me and click this surface. Again, not perfect, I know. Um, But I can work with this. All right. The reason, so so I don't know if you guys have seen this before. This is cool. I and mean, this looks, that looks, it's awesome. But it's obviously got some problems. It's not connected down here. Um, and it doesn't go to vertical over here. The problem is this surface is not perpendicular to any segment of, of this line. Right? So this line right here it's starting off weird. So the first thing that follow me does is it takes this surface and says, rotate it up so it's perpendicular to this first line and go from there. That's why we get that gap at the bottom. Uh, we can deal with that though. And it's all about groups. This is the name, the sub name of this is modeling Hogwarts Great Hall interior, working with groups in groups in groups. So I'm going to grab this surface and this line, and I'm going to make them into a group. I'm gonna go into that group. The reason I did this is I can get rid of everything else and now I can work on just what do I need to do to make this work. Um, so there's a couple things I can do. Um, one, what I'm gonna do right now before I do anything, I'm gonna just grab this, I'm gonna push pull it straight down. I'm gonna get rid of all this. Now I'm gonna go up to this line. I'm gonna to go to the last segment on this line and I'm just gonna trace it long. All right, grab this line and the one I just made, re-weld that, grab this line and this line. It's okay that these are broken because I actually wanna transition right here. And I'm gonna take that and say, follow me with this surface. And that's what we get. So if I come out here, that's, actually what I want. Um, there's a little cleanup to happen there. I could take this, push pull this back up to here. Um, I can uh, 
Get rid of my extra line there. That is the volume that I want right now. It's not done, but we're, we're close. I'm gonna take this uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing with mirror. I'm just gonna draw one of my little mirror flags right here and say mirror that, use Curic mirror to mirror it over to here, it's an option. That is what we're shooting for right there. Um, but I can't actually intersect these two. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to create a quick, this is a real simple intersection. It's actually just a vertical intersection. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to come in here. I do want to see the rest of my model and I'm going to, basically I'm just going to create a big flat cutting plane right here, oops, like that, and I'm going to select all of this, intersect face of a selection, that's going to cut it, now I can delete this, and then grab everything that's on this side of the line, delete that, oops, missed, missed a couple lines here. And there we go, actually, get rid of that. That's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. So I can take this now, get rid of this surface in there, and I can take that and mirror that over here. And then we got that arch going all the way across. I don't need it as a group. I only grouped it uh, to do that work. So I can select both copies here and uh, explode them. All right, so that's gonna put all that together. I can take this now, and actually, if I look at my reference, I can take that all the way up to right here. That's looking cool. And then I can do this. I'm just gonna close this space up right now. Push that back to here, and then go clean that all up. I know, sometimes I do excessive cleanup. I do more cleanup than I actually need to do, but uh, I'm a fan of clean models. What can I say? So that looks good. Don't need that line. And I can do the same thing over here. Take this straight up to here. Push pull that back to here. And again, I don't know what's going on on the outside. I don't really, I don't really care to clean that up um, right this second. Cool. So that, let's get rid of our reference layer and take a peek at this. Ooh, look at that. That looks, uh, looks like something. All right. Once again, shift erase these lines so everything melds back together. All right, looking good. Um, I know, I'm going to delete this too, so don't get that surface flickering. Oops. There we go. Um, I know there's upper windows. I'm going to put those off just for a few moments because I want to get some more detail in down here. Uh, what time are we at? Yeah, see, so we're we're an hour and a half in. We're doing we're doing all right. I can't. Oh heck, I'll just let's just do it. Let's throw that upper window in real quick. Because like I said, that upper window is really just a section of this. So I'm going to grab this window right here, which is a copy of the component we used all through the rest of this. I'm going to make this one unique, and I'm going to call that the upper window assembly or assemble lily. There we go. I'm going to go into that now that that's unique and I can delete this lower half. Oops, get the, I just deleted these lines out. I'm just going to stick them back in real quick. 
Oops. Ooh. Too quick. Too quick. All right. So I can take that now. And let's see. I'm trying to think of a creative way to do this whole thing. <laughs> I'm going to grab this. And let's see. Start by placing it right in the middle there. And I will rotate it so it's facing the right direction. Perfect, just like on there. All right, so now that needs to move up. To move it up, I'm going to use my reference image over here. because So with this highlighted, so this is going to be a little bit of a trick. We're going to look away, and then we look back, something's going to have happened. So I'm going to have it selected right now, and I'm going to move it from, where am, I, where am I connected to? Top of the arch. OK. So I'm going to say I want to move it from right here up to here. And when I do that, I use my reference points over here, but because it was selected, this is what moved up. Um, I'm going to take it, and I'm going to slide it out like this. I want to get it so that this geometry is intersecting this geometry. All right, I'm going to come in here, select this surface, right click, intersect face with model. That should give me a break there. It didn't, I don't have a surface coming down here, so I have to manually trace that line. I hide it now. Ooh, yeah. So I got some extra geometry. I can get rid of all this stuff. But what I got there, the important part is what I did get, not just what I'm getting rid of, is this outline of the window. Yeah, that's the stuff. Because what I want to do is I want to actually take this shape that a second, a little tiny segment there. All right. That looks cool. I'm going to grab that right now. I'm going to slide it from one side to the other. Oops. That was not what I wanted to do at all. All right. I got to close that up. All right, there we go. Grab that shape, and I'm going to slide it from here to here, and then flip it over like that. All right, so there we go. Um, so what I can do now I want to emulate the same thing. See the same, the same offset right here. What I'm wondering is how far that is. Oops, excuse me. Check that dimension. Looks like. Uh, one foot five and 15 sixteenths. Let's call it one foot six. Or actually, we don't need to call it anything because I can say offset and pull this dimension out to here. So one of the things I am doing right now, you guys may have caught on to this, um, I am modeling with stuff in visible lines right now. I can come in here show hidden so I can actually see where these lines are. It'll probably make it a little bit easier to, to do this. Same thing here, so I'm going to say offset from here to here. I'll delete these extra lines. All right, so why I did that is because what I'm hoping will happen right now, I'm going to see what autofold does for me. Um, I'm going to try to move that uh, from here, red axes, along the red axes, into, nope, blue axes. Where are we at? Yes, blue axes into here. It's okay. It's not great. I'd have to do this. Actually, it's not just not great. It's really not good. <laughs> so that's not going to work. Um, actually, let me try one, one other thing. 
Sometimes you can help auto fold a lot by manually cutting. Uh, hey, it's our, our viewer with the, my favorite first name of all our viewers. How you doing, Aaron? Let's see, if I force that cut, does that get any better? No, no, not at all. That's just not, that's, that's unattractive is what that is. All right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get rid of all that real quick. Do the same thing here. Grab this, I'm gonna move it straight back to here. Uh, ooh, that was even worse. Oh, I didn't put that cut line in. There we go. And now I can move that, boom, straight back to here. Look at that, I don't know what's going on there. Man, you were, that was an easy one. All right. Oh, I missed. And we're missed. getting some advice here. All right. Robert says copy from the one below, and Nerman says use split tools. These are both great ideas. Um, but I do like this. It does it lines up perfectly. So actually, just take this and option copy. Boom. Option copy. See, this is where my mistakes save you time in the long run. If you ever have a problem like this, just call Robert Coolidge. <laughs> um, all right, so to finish that off, this does then go all the way through. So does this side. Ooh, I broke some stuff. Made some. I made some ugly geometry right here. Let's let's just clean that all up and clean that all up. Shift erase this. Nope, not that one. Undo. Um, again, I'm gonna get rid of these surfaces so I don't see that flicker on the inside. Uh, get this line back in here. Heck yeah, it's looking good. All right, shift erase this and this. I could have broken this up too a little bit differently uh, than I did. It would have helped a little bit clean up my geometry just a touch. Um, uh, because I could have changed my component to be from here to here, which it would have been just around that window. That would have been an option uh, instead of splitting the window like this. All right, with that, I can take this guy and I can slide him put it right back here. I'm gonna slide it forward. I don't remember how far forward it went. Slide it forward. I'm going to use this as a reference because I know it's this far in. All right. Upper window's in the right spot. Now I can grab it. Command X. Oh, C, excuse me. Thanks for telling me that. No window. Actually, I do, I do want to cut it. I want to cut it out, go into this component, and paste in place. All right. There we go. Now. We have all of our windows. Ooh, that's something. All right. Um. So, where are we at? Halfway through ish. Uh, the big pieces we still got to do. We need to uh, finish up the ends. So I got to put the door here. Got to put that little uh, step thing with the window down at the end here. I got a fireplace and I got a ceiling. Um, I am in a situation where not everybody's gonna get everything at this point. Um, I think I'm going to, let's put the ceiling in. You guys good with that? Does that sound good to everybody? Does that make you all happy? Tell me what you think about ceilings. Don't hold back. Sounds good to me. All right, Eric's on board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to do these, uh, the ceiling, we have these arches, which are super cool. I'm, I, I 
Honestly, just because of the time, I'm not gonna go in and detail these out all the way because I wanna get more of the other pieces in. But uh, we're gonna make these components and uh, throw them in as well. I'm gonna start with this reference over here. I'm gonna grab a line in the middle. I'm gonna take this all the way up to, I guess this line right here. All right, now this portion, that was really not in the center. Ugh. I guess it wasn't that far off. So this portion right here, I'm gonna trace a quick profile for. Like this, this is, whoa, everything's falling apart. Nope, it's cool, everything's cool. Um, this is where, <laughs> stop talking and I start clicking. I don't know if this is right or not. I'm tracing shadows right now. You know. All right. There we go. So I'll take that. I will come down here below and I'm going to put a circle in right below here, and cut that circle in half. So I don't actually need this half over here. Grab this line, and I'm gonna say, oop, I'm gonna have an issue there. I'm not going to erase it yet, because what I'm gonna do instead, remember how we had that issue earlier that I was talking about, how uh, that piece jumped up on the arch and then started to follow me. Same thing's gonna happen here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the circle, I'm gonna grab it by the middle of any of the arcs, it doesn't matter which one. And I'm gonna swing that arc around so that that is what is right there. So if I look at my circle closely, see how I have this perpendicular line starting? That line right now is perpendicular to this surface. So by doing that one little quick rotate, I'm gonna be able to Real easily. Whoops. Well, that was right. Select this piece right here. Follow me. Click right here and get that column done. Just that easy. A triple click, reverse spaces. All right. Carrying on, I have. Lots of stuff. Um, this is going to go something like that high. Um, and here, let me grab a line here, pull it straight across to here. Ooh, look, that lined up pretty well. Good job, plans. All right. Don't ask me what I'm doing right now, and I won't tell you that I don't know. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to just, basically I'm just trying to make a little reference grid. So if I go straight up here to this same height here. All right. That's the square in which our arcs happen. I'm going to, let's just delete it. Um, so I'm gonna have one arc that goes from this point to this point. I'm gonna have another arc this point to this point. that and then another arc that goes from this point to about there all right bring that right there rotate it out the right direction 
Nope, not that way. All right, I'll take that and I'll slap that right in the middle. Okay, so that is a 2D drawing of my arch. Something you may notice is that we have this fancy shape right here. Um, that's actually a section of what this arch looks like. You can see we have all these, we have a lot, of, there's a lot of fanciness in here. What I'm gonna do is again, I don't want to, I do not want to spend an insane amount of time on this, but I'm going to go ahead and we'll get some small fanciness. We'll get, we'll get a little, I'm going to do a little bit of follow me fanciness. Sometimes when you're tracing on a surface like this, if you get real close, it'll start like seeing surfaces behind and you'll lose your line like that. Uh, if you just hit the arrow keys to constrain to the axes you're trying to draw on, then you'll, it'll come back on the surface. All right, take that and I'm going to rotate like that. I'm grab that right by the middle. And I'm option copying because I'll leave that one where it is. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna select this profile. I'm gonna make it into a group. It's in a group now. Now I'm going to grab, and turn my reference off. I'm gonna take this line and I'm gonna go, whoop, this line right here and I'm gonna extend it long just like I did on my last follow me. Now I'm gonna select this line, this line and this line I'm gonna hit follow me, but now I select to select the group. I can't, it won't let me follow a group, but what I can do is I can right click and I can say edit group. I'm still in follow me right now, so I can click right here and it will follow that shape down. So I come out, all right, that looks pretty cool. Um, what I need now is I need profile for these smaller fancy curves, my, my minor fanciness, and I don't have a section through them like I did, oh no, here we go, here's my, here's my smaller curves, these are my lesser fancies. Right. I'm going to do this exact same thing, so if you didn't catch it the first time, pay attention, we're going to do it again. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, draw half of it, rotate, flip it around like that, grab that, double click and make it a group. All right, and now bring that out here. All right, so this, I'm gonna do this as two separate pieces. Um, I'm gonna grab, I don't wanna mess with this column, so I'm gonna grab this column detail I'm gonna make that a group. And I'm gonna take that and this piece and I'm going to hide them. Get rid of them, I don't need them right now. I also don't need my reference. This is all I need. All right, so I have this piece right here and I have this. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna take this out straight like that yeah, this may actually end up being a little weird, but I'll fix it later. Or, well, we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. I shouldn't say I'll, I shouldn't offer to fix anything. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. Who can really tell? <laughs> I should probably be able to. All right, and I'm going to take a line straight down here. And once again, line, line, line. Follow me. Right click, edit group, click surface. All right, there's one of our inside fancinesses. Um, reverse faces, and I'm going to grab this face right here, copy it, come out, paste it, just wherever, make that a new group. 
select and hide this group because I'm going to do the exact same thing here. Take this line out, take this line straight down, move this guy right here so he is on the end point of this line. Once again, click, 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 follow me, right click, edit group. All right, now I'm just gonna get rid of all this. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna go edit, unhide all, bring it all back. That's what we got going on right now. Not too bad, it's, it's, it's something. This is the only spot that I'm concerned about right here. That makes some editing on the fly. I'm gonna take this right here and I'm gonna scoot it vertically up. There we go. Um, one thing I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to align these all horizontally as well. So I'm gonna grab this one slide it over bring it back to the middle. The same thing with this guy right here. Actually, that, that did line up pretty well, didn't it? All right, cool. So I'm gonna do this in a couple pieces. I'm gonna grab these two first. And, hmm, how do I wanna do this? Um, I'm gonna go You know, every once in a while, it occurs to me that I could possibly have a game plan for some of these things. But then I think, that's no fun. You guys wouldn't enjoy that. <laughs> if you would, I apologize. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna union these two. We'll see, we'll, I'll see how this works. Because what I wanna get rid of is I wanna get rid of this chunk out here and this chunk down here. I can't think of a simple way to use solid tools to not do that. So um, it's okay, because I'm gonna come in here, and this is actually gonna be pretty quick, I think, because I can just cl click there, click here, and then push, pull, push, pull, and then connect this point to this point to this point. Nope, and then That'll stay, and this will push, pull, and push, pull. Same thing, connect these two points. That'll stay. This will push, pull, and push, pull. And let's see how that looks. Oh. Now, I probably could have saved some pain and maybe done this as one, uh, oops, could have done this as one, one piece, one uh, extrusion. I did not do that. I did not clean it up enough to make this all just one push pull through. So. That could have could have saved me a little bit of time and energy now. Got Oops. a comment question. All right. From uh, Fiddly, uh, the follow me tool is not perfect. It adds an extra pixel or so when you want to create a section, for example. Any quick workaround for this? Adds a pixel or two. Uh. Sure, I understand. What? Says, uh, so when you create two pieces, when at least one of them is created with the follow me tool, they don't fit each other perfectly. Um, I'm guessing if you're seeing something like that, 
it it's either your start point not being in the right spot um, or having your your push pull face perpendicular to the line at first um, if if I'm understanding your question which I'm not sure that I am um, push pull is great but you do have to invest time into the initial setup I will say that um, I don't know if that's actually what's happening or not though all right uh, I'm gonna join this together try to decide if I should just go for it yeah water's great let's jump right in how to shell that thing oh okay uh, yeah I believe this one right here I need to do some cleanup let's run follow me straight edges or I'm sorry solid inspector not follow me Got follow me on the brain um, all right, so one thing I'm seeing right here, yee, this is ugly. Um, all right, I'm gonna do, I don't like the way this all comes together. So I think what I wanna do, I actually wanna cut this piece off where it runs into this piece. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud right now, guys. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, Cause this is not gonna, this is gonna be a mess. Um, so one thing I can do is I can come in here and I can push pull this back. Cause it's gonna only go to there. So the same thing here and push pull that back to here. See if that helps me visualize. Okay, so that runs the small one into the large one. Okay, that I feel better about. All right, I'm gonna take those two now, union them, and uh, see what kind of cleanup I gotta make. Not too bad. This this does not look. <laughs> this does not look awesome, but it's not too bad. Um, all right, so just to to make this all look kind of nice, I'm gonna push pull this surface back to here. Align those two shapes. Um, what's going on here? All right. I'm gonna push pull that in. Pull this out to here. Pretty sure this is, uh, you know, this is how this is all designed. Just like the gothic architects used to do. Let's snip some stuff off here, snip some stuff off here. Um, this is another spot that I could be doing this symmetrically. I could actually have cut this whole thing in half. I did not, I chose not to do that. So I do have to do each of these steps I do. I gotta do it on both sides, but uh, that wasn't so bad. All right. A um, couple of quick, small cleanups on this thing. There's, a, there's something going on right here, which I don't understand. Out okay, that comes off okay. That comes out okay. Something wrong there though. Do I have something hidden? No, nothing's hidden. Oh, there we go. Nope. What? All right. Now I know you're just messing with me. So that might be slightly out of plane. I'm not gonna mess anymore though. We got a we got we got a great hull to build. All right. I'm what I'm doing is I'm just knocking out some of these some of this geometry. 
and then I'll let uh, Solid Inspector fix the rest. All right, so that's half our column. The one last piece I need to do is I need to have it cut so it'll go flush against the wall. I'm going to do that by creating a column from the top, or using the column to create a rectangle. I'll push pull that out, make that into a group, uh, make it solid, and then I can say trim this or cut this from, oh man, what's your problem? There we go. Cut this from this. All right, there we go. So now, I'm going to push this up to top here. All right, now I'm grab these two pieces, make them into a component. Uh, birch. Awesome. I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. Oops. Not this requirement, but I do want to close this up. There we go. Just because. All right. And we know right now this is at the right height because we traced it right off the image. So I'm going to grab it by any point that's on the surface. So any of these points right here. And I'm going to bring it along the red axes to the, uh, where it meets this face. And then I will slide it so that the middle here, sticking with the green axes, goes to the middle of one of these. Ooh, that's one good thing. Lawrence needs you to uh, save if you want oh. mind. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, all right, so where do we stick this? Probably makes sense to grab this, Command X, into this one and paste in place. Good golly. I love components. Oh, wait, something's not right. Something is not centered. Oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. All right. This. Don't think is in the center. Nope, not that. All right, let's check and see if this. Slightly off center. Nope, that wasn't it either. Um, I never did my cleanup on the end either, so um, I'll get to that. But first, I want to figure out why these two aren't meeting up perfectly. I wonder if I did my components wrong. Does this go straight across to this? <gasps> it doesn't. Dig says yes, but you should have flipped the copy, not rotated it. Dig's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, I got nothing else to say, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I I did that less than perfectly. Okay, so we got a little. Kind of looks like I got hands like this now, holding hands. All right, let's uh, let's get in here, and uh, we'll go into one of these. And I'll do the same thing I did before. I'm just gonna grab a point right here. I'm gonna create a box. Push pull that box. I'm going to make that box into a group. I'm having a hard time seeing what I'm doing now because I have overlapping components. So this is an instance where I'm going to go to component edit and say hide similar components. That's going to get rid of all the rest of the stuff. And now what I can do is I can take, oops, this is not solid right this second. Let's figure out why it's not solid. Fix that. Is this solid? Oops. Fix that. 
and then again, I'm gonna subtract this from this. Sometimes stuff just comes together and it's, it's cool. That looks pretty cool. Awesome. All right, uh, let's get some end walls on here. Um, so I have, a, I'm gonna save. And I'm gonna drink a little coffee. Maybe uh, another save? You bet, never, too, never a bad time to save. Actually, that's not true. There are times where you're doing something that you don't know how well it's gonna go. True. Um, uh, Slayer Darth is ax asking if we are the actual SketchUp company. Yes, Eric and I are both Trimble employees, and we are broadcasting through the various official SketchUp channels. So we are actually, I don't wanna say we are SketchUp, because we are SketchUp. You guys are SketchUp with us. Um, but yeah, we do actually work for the company that sells the product. So we're not just uh, enthusiasts. Well, I am. I mean, I mean, Eric, are you enthusiastic about SketchUp? Oh, definitely. So, so we like SketchUp. We, we like, like it. It's good. We, yeah, it's pretty cool. I would be using SketchUp if I didn't work at the company. I'll say it that way. Um, I don't know that I'd be live streaming modeling, though. Um, I only do this because I don't, I don't know why I do this. I do this for you guys. We do this. All of us together. All right. Ramble less, model more. Okay, so right here, I do... One question I have is if this arch thing is actually on the end wall. I'm guessing not because it looks like this wall will run into it. But let's go, let's go check the reference images, shall we? Um, there, it, it lo okay, so it looks like what ends up happening is just that top section and the arch, again, this is cut off because this is real world and not magic land, but um, we'll em emulate something just like this. And actually, I think I had I feel like I had another picture of that entryway. Yeah, that's the same. That's the same picture though. I feel like that door is not grand enough. I feel like that door should be like twice as high. <laughs> um, let's, let's look at this image real quick. I don't know if it has a. It doesn't. Um. All right, well, we'll do what we want then, won't we? Okay, so we kind of know what's happening there. Let's hop back in and uh, let's get a wall down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two end pieces and I'm gonna make them unique. They're called column right now. I'm gonna call them end column. And I'm going to come into these, grab this, and move this up. And that's how that's going to look. And right at the middle here is where I'm going to pull this wall out. Presumably that just goes all the way up to the ceiling, so let's do that. And so pull that through to the middle. Oops. And as Dave already pointed out, <laughs> I, I should have flipped instead of rotating that because this is an issue. Um, yeah, 
I over rotated. So I'm just going to grab this whole thing and delete it. And then I will just take this whole component and use mirror to mirror it back over. All right. So there we are with the end. You can see right, right up here. Ah, oh, nuts. I did that wrong. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So I'm going to grab, uh, I have to come in here and grab this guy. So I have a component inside of a component inside of a component. That lowest level component is still its own thing. So if it repeats inside of other components and I make a change, it still represents there. Being inside of a container doesn't protect the component from being changed with the others. So I'm gonna grab this one right here and I'm going to make it unique, call it end arch and come back over to one of these guys right here and fix that by putting this geometry right here, back down where it goes. All right, there we go. So you saw that geometry flickering as I was clicking in and out. Um, that is a functionality of this right here, component edit hide similar components. So as I go into different layers of the component, stuff is disappearing if it's the same thing. All right, that's looking pretty cool. Um, so what we gotta do now is we do have to make our doorway. Um, let's see how do this. Let's turn on x-ray temporarily. And I'm going to make a square that represents half of this. I'm going to do this the same way. Uh, come on side, Mark. I'm going to do this the same way we did the windows, I think. Um, and I'm going to come to the middle. So I know this isn't, this isn't uh, centered. We're a little bit off, but it's going to be okay. Right, I'm going to divide this line. into four even segments. And then remove these segments. No, now I'm gonna divide this line. I'm gonna make these, I'm trying to make these symmetrical, I think. Um, Marvin says, can a section plane be used down the middle so one wall is easier to visualize? Absolutely. Good call. All right. Yeah, we could chop this thing in half so we we're only... Uh, reach that point where I can't talk and do things <laughs> again. All right, now I'm going to come in here and I'm gonna put some arches here. I'm gonna do this using the regular arch arc rather than the two point arc. Um, where am I? Hold on, maybe. I'm only gonna do it once because because I want to put this. I want to make this even. So I'm gonna copy this over to here, and then put a standard arc from the end of that line to here, and then put that same arc here, here, here. All right, that's the shape I want to put in here for my, uh, my door. Now I'm going to make my door big. I want to make this, this, that door look like it was like maybe, 10 feet tall or something. 
I want this door to be grand. So I'm going to take this up to like here. This is going to be a big door. All right. And I'm going to have an arc. We'll do the same thing. No, actually, I won't. I'm going to use Bezier on this because I want that uh, gothic archi arch Gop, go, gopic. Oh boy, <laughs> I'm gonna save. <laughs> I want that gothic arc shape. <laughs> that was that was a lot more work than it needed to be. All right, so I'm gonna go to draw Bezier curves. Come here to here. Now, I'm going to hide both the ends because I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. Actually, no, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take this thing all the way around. One blow. All right. Grab all that. Weld that. And now I can just select here. Follow me with this. Um, triple click, make that a group. It's not going to repeat, so I'm not going to make it a, oops, I grabbed too much. Undo. There we go. Nope, still got extra lines here. There we go. Make that a group. And then I'm going to come in real quick. Uh, no, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here. There. So there's my doors. Fairly certain there is two of them. Um, they do look like pool noodles. Oh man, it's getting worse. They do look like pool noodles. Bring that way through. It's 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 farther through than it needs to be, but um, uh, now I can put this up like this. I made it. I made it too big. I made it made it larger than it needed to be, so that I could use this group right here, which I'm going to make into a solid. Solid. This is actually a long way from being a solid, so change of plans. I'm going to come into this group right here. I'm going to take this face. I really don't, it's a pretty simple push pull actually on this geometry. So I'm just going to grab this face and copy it. Control C, come into this face. I'm going to paste in place, Oop, wrong button, paste in place, and just push this through to the opposite side. And with that, we should have a little bit of cleanup. There we go. Um, do some shift erasing right here, right here, on the outside for fun. All right, and that, there we go, puts that, our grand entrance, um, save. And we could detail the doors out, I might come back to that. I'm gonna try to close up the room real quick. Oh, speaking of closing the room, let's hide this. All right, just come down here. So down on this end, <clears throat> this is where we have kind of a, so with this transition, I think there's, so we got, yeah, some steps up. Uh, this portion comes up, and then we have like a grand, uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? The window thing that goes out, bay, the big bay. Um, I'm going to get rid of these. And I'm going to grab my end pieces that I created. And I'm going to put them, a copy of them down on the other end. I just used mirror to, to move them over, but I'll get them lined up right now. Uh, not that I'm going to use this, but I'm going to use something like it. So I'm going to take these two right now and make them unique. And now I can figure out, because I didn't, what I wanted to get was this same detail because I think that, again, pictures are lacking, but I think if we come look at some of these, save, if we look at some of these pictures of that end, we have this solid wall and the bay goes back, so I can actually do that from what I have already. Um, so we, we have extra detail to put on the door, it looks like. Yep, still have extra detail to put on the door. <laughs> Give me the other end. All right. Yeah, so there, you can see that, that that window goes up high. So this is where it steps inside on either side there. Have our steps up. It looks like the windows are all the same height too, so uh, that's kind of nice. That interior step doesn't affect that window. Um, all right, let's uh, let us soldier on. Um, so if I come into this one right here, unhide the rest. Looks like right about here. I'm not going to take it all the way up. Let's see how high should we go with this. We'll go to the top of like this window. So we'll come up this high. That didn't work. We'll come here. We're gonna go vertically. I hit the wrong ax. I hit the wrong axes. That's gonna go this high. Okay. We'll take that over. Push pull that in. Push this back just a touch. Cool. Pull this out to here. And then I'm going to hit Option Push Pull to create a new surface. And then pull that surface over to right there. That's going to create that bay, that initial bay. And we'll work inside that. We'll clean, clean that up from there. Um, Awesome. Before I get into detail on that, I do want to put the floor in because it's going to break. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to step out of everything, all the way out of my groups. And I'm just going to put a big rectangle in on the ground from this corner to this corner. There it is. It's a floor. I'm going to triple click and make that a group. Um, so what I'm going to do to get these cuts, so I mean actually I could, I could actually just leave this rectangle by itself. If I, the only reason I put it in there is so I can, you know, come in and apply a tile texture or something like that to it. Uh, in this case, I actually, I'm going to pull my steps up out of this. So I want this surface to reflect uh, all this geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the group, I'm going to slide it up vertically just a bit like that. Then I'm going to select the surface. I'm going to go in here, select the surface, intersect face with model, and that should give me a break all the way around there. If I hide the rest of the model now, I can see, actually kind of gave me a floor plan. Oops, and look, there's Mark's little feet. Let me get rid of those. <laughs> um, and I'm going to come around here and get rid. All I'm really going to look for now, I just want, really, I just want this piece right here. So, if 
I select this, oops, all right, I take that and I'm going to command C, I'm going to copy it because I don't want to, I don't want to cut it. And then I can just take this original floor, delete it, and now command V to place this. And I want to place it, tuck it right in the corner. Sorry, volume probably is a little low because I'm looking down and mumbling. I apologize. I will try to keep my speaking posture up and my projecting volume. I apologize. All right, so now that I got that correctly trimmed floor, I'm going to select it. I'm going to make it into a group. If I wanted to, I could make that into a floor. I know Dave right now is probably saying, you should probably make that into a group or into a component. That way I could have named it and everything. Um, but uh, I didn't. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so I'm going to come into this group. And I'm going to draw a line straight across here. And I want these steps to be the same size. So I'm going to take it, option, I'm going to copy it up here. X to enter. That's going to give me all of my steps. Um, then I have another one. So I'm just going to grab that same line and copy that back. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just going to put it right there. All right. So there are my steps, what I believe to be my steps. Um, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to offset it up. What, seven inches? Seven sound good? Seven, great, seven. And so this one will come up another seven. This one will come up to here and then go up another seven. This one will come up to here and go up another seven. All right, so there is the end of my gray hall. Um, if I wanted to, if I wanted to get a little, a little fancy here, I could do something like Take this line and this line and this line. And I'm thinking fancy because I, I, I get the feeling that wizards are fancier than normal people. And I could take that and maybe drop that down one inch. And I could put a little, little bull nose here. Um, pull that out three quarters of an inch. Hey there. So you do something like that. That's, you know, that's. It's, it's, it's entry level fancy, but it's a little fancy. Um, I don't know why I'm hung up on making things fancy, but the wizarding world smacks of fanciness to me. I don't, I, I don't know. All right, that looks good. Let's save it. And um, let's address this window down here. We're gonna have to get creative because like I said, I don't have the full I don't have a full image of what that looks like. But if we look here, I'm gonna say that these window details are the same as the ones on the side. So we're gonna grab these components and we're gonna reuse them. What happens at the top? We're gonna to make up now-ish. So this looks like one, two, three of those windows. Um, so let's go ahead and grab one. Come in here, double click. Grab that, control C. And then I'm gonna totally out of context, all on its own. I'm gonna drop one in here. Let's get it facing the right direction. And let's just plug this in the corner and see where, uh, see where it, how it looks. Pull this out a little bit. Okay. If I was to take the other, so I was to take this one right now, grab it right there, option, and copied it straight across to here, and then said divide that by two, that's where those exact windows put in here would sit. Obviously, there's a huge gap right here. This is this is not ideal because this leaves me with a one foot three gap between them. It does have a gap, so there is actually some geometry here. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, Bradley's, Bradley Design's heading out. Thanks for coming by. Um, yes, uh, Christian is asking if this will end up on the warehouse. It will end up on the warehouse, and I will post a link on our forum in the topic about this live model. All right, so a couple things are happening. One thing is it does look like it steps up. It has a little bit of a, a sill like the other ones. So we'll copy the geometry from over there, and then we'll actually fill this in and use the exact same windows all the way up. Cool. Um, which means, actually, I'm going to get rid of that because I'm going to grab a full window knowing that I'm going to change it. All right, we kind of stick this right here. I'm going to pull it in a little ways. And I'm going to take this one right now, and I'm going to make it unique. And I'm going to call this, do I have an end window? Is that a thing yet? Let's find out. Nope, we're good. All right. So I'm going to come in here and uh, let's bring that down. Let's see. Okay, here's what I'm. Here's what I think I want to. I want to gonna do. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to take all of all of this. Take that and I'm going to shift it up here for the time being. Because I think what we'll do, we'll get rid of these lines on the sides right now, is take all of this, make a copy of it, and put it on top of itself. And then put all of this then up on top of that. Oh, big, big window. All right. Marcelo says you missed two steps. Not sure what he's referring to, though. Is it say and v? Because I normally do, but I miss. I, I did that recently. Uh, let me know what I missed, Marcelo. Uh, I'm going to take this real quick, and I'm just going to get rid of it, make an open space. Um, this right now, this is what you're referring to. This right now, this has been cleaned up. I do need to do that. So um, I may come in here, hide the rest of the model. I'm going to push that back to there. Do the same thing here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of these. So uh, Marcel, let me know what I did wrong. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you, Marcel. I'm, I, I like to make mistakes so you don't have to. That's, that's the service we offer here on Friday afternoons. All right, so there we go. That's that, and then actually that will then slide all the way up against the wall. And just like I did before, and take this option and copy it against that wall divide by two, that's going to get me my three windows. That's a, that's a big window. Um, but it's okay. You can do that kind of thing when, uh, you know, you're governed by magic and not science and gravity and stuff. That's right. All right I'm going to take, take this, copy it. I'm going to uh, paste in place. I'm going to pull that across to fill the gap, and then I'm going to Pull this all the way up to right here. And now I'm going to triple click that. I'm going to make that into a new component. And I'm going to call that the end window spacer. Because I don't know what it's called in real life, much less the world of wizards. OK. Uh, again, to clean up, I can come in here. And I can shift erase these end lines 
she have to raise these end lines. I actually delete my surfaces on the inside because otherwise those surfaces will show up. And then I can do the same thing on here. Shift, erase these two, these two, and then delete this and delete that. There we go. Now, oops, I delete too much. I do actually want, just want this gone and this gone. There we go. Looks like one big happy piece. Uh, ooh, look, at that, look, at, look at that grandeur if I tip up. Oh. I'm fighting not to crane my actual neck. Okay, so this is good. Um, scale, stretch. Um, yeah, if I, if I scaled uh, the windows, well, the, the thing is the windows look like they are the same exact component. Oh, you know what? All of these though, would probably match the same exterior window height. So I probably need to drop those to right here. So now my windows would all line up on the outside too. I said that like it was a big, whoa, hey, hold on. It really wasn't. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Um, cool. Uh, um, so, there's not a default shortcut for pace and place, but I assigned uh, option V to it. So you can change your shortcuts by just going to preferences, click on shortcuts, type the uh, shortcut you want to use. So paste, and there's paste in place. So I have uh, option V assigned to it. So command V is regular paste, and then I just changed it to uh, option V. All right, so I want to get some kind of an arch in here, an overarching arch, if you will. Um, I may, I may cut a corner or two here for this, to be honest, because we're we're coming up on the three o'clock time. So here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to take this. And I'm going to push this down just just a touch. And then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab the same thing I did on the other one. I'm going to paste in place there. Drop a line straight down there. I'm going to come in here, come in here, come in here. Select this line and this line. And I'm going to copy that, come all the way out, paste in place again. And I'm going to hide this. I'm going to say, take this, 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 and this. Weld them. Follow me with this. Oh, what's your problem here? Oh. Follow me, edit component, click right here. Right, that's gonna get me that. All right, that's gonna work okay. Um, actually, I wanna go, so in here, I'm gonna grab this rectangle right here and just copy it over. That's going to break this all this geometry, so I can go like this and use option. I know I used I used rotate again. This time I think it was was the correct thing to do. Um, get all that up there because, uh, well, <sighs> debating with how fancy I want to make things still. There, I'm just caught up on the fancy. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not. I'm just gonna take this straight up, take this straight over. And just grab that, pull it through. Whoa, what, 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 what was it? What was that? Oh, I deleted the edge. 
That was that was absolutely incorrect. Thank you for correcting me, SketchUp. You did it wrong, Aaron. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, this is pretty much a solid, so I, I could probably clean this up a lot quicker and easier by just uh, using s solid tools. I'll say that solid tools kind of gets a wrap for being a tool you use when you're uh, 3D printing, but man, I use solid tools all the time. See how that looks? Yeah, that's going to work okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab that shape right there, copy it, paste in place again. Oops, I did not hit paste in place. What did I hit? All right, try again. Copy that, control C, exit out, paste in place, and then I will flip that. Push pull that to the other side. We've got some comments about uh, the difference between rotating and mirroring. There is a difference. Yeah. Uh, why is one preferred <laughs> over the other? Um, so here's the thing. Uh, Mirroring, let me show let me show you an example real quick. That's the best way. Come on, why is it doing squirrely here? All right. All right. All right, so here is I'm gonna put all this into one group in just one second. But first, let me show you the difference between mirror and rotate. What is going on? There we go. I was in one of those spots where I had no context. I didn't know what I was doing. All right. So here I have this little shape lined out. Okay, so I'm looking straight at it, at straight forward on the ground plane. So if I was to take this and uh, Mirror, let's use flip along, right? So zoom all the way out. Red axis is running this way. So if I was to right click on it right now and say flip along the red direction, I would get that. So it takes it and flips it. If I was to grab that same thing and use, use rotate, I would end up with this. So rotate actually spins it. Um, but I can do something very similar to what flip along does by being careful of how I rotate. So if I wanted that same thing that flip along does, I could do that. The faces are reversed, but the geometry is in the same spot. But as Dave was saying, so here, let's, let's make two copies of this. Or, or let's, uh, yeah, so make two copies. And take this and make it into component a1, make this into component A2, and now I'm going to grab both of these and copy them over. All right, this one right here, I'm going to say flip along red axes. This one right here, I'm going to rotate. Now here's where the big difference comes in. All right, so if I grab this one and I push pull, See what happened? They both went the same way. Grab this one right here, push, pull. They go towards each other. So flipping is actually, even if I'm grabbing a 2D surface and moving it, it has a front and a back. It is a 3D entity, even though it's only a 2D, in 2D space at that time. Um, you do have to be conscious of that, because that's this is exactly what bit me when I did the second half of this front wall. When I, when I push, pulled it, one pushed into the room, the other pushed out of the room. So. There is a difference. Uh, depending on what you're working on, you might get the exact same result from it, but uh, they are two different things. All right. Um, here, I'm going to take all of this, 
make it into one group, and then I'm going to explode it all. And I'm going to use Solid Inspector to fix it up. Wait, what happened there? Make it a group, go into the group. There we go. Now explode them. I just made it a group and then immediately exploded it afterwards. Doesn't have the same effect, doesn't, doesn't do the same thing for me. All right, there we go. All right, so now we just have one piece representing that arch. So that's, that looks pretty, that looks pretty sweet. All right, I'm going to turn my reference off right now because I don't know that I need it a whole lot more. Um, I am assuming that talking <laughs> sorry there we, there we go okay, actually no you know what let's let's get rid of that all together we'll take whoops we'll take this one up and I'm assuming because this place is so very archy that this right here is going to have some kind I'm gonna drop it drop it down just a bit but I know there's rules with gothic arches about how everything is supposed to uh, line up but uh, I'm winging it um, I'm gonna draw a bezier curve from here down to about here and try to kind of I think I drew this in the wrong group. No, I didn't. I got in the right group. All right, so I'm going to assume that this comes out like this. All right. Something like that. Probably has a, actually, you know what? In the, uh, in the plans, it's no longer really referencing, but it does have this little step thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume That is something like like that. I'm going to grab this whole arc. Actually, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to make them one group. Go into that group. Select these two and explode them. Because I want this to all be one piece. So now if I come in here, select this, 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 and this, I can say, follow me with this. There you go. That looks better. That gives me that whole. Oh, yeah. That's good stuff. All right, um, uh, Alberto, if you can throw your reference up on, I did it again. There we go. Uh, up on our forum, I could look at it right now. Uh, yeah, a third, that's what it was, yeah. You're right, a nice rose window would look good up there, wouldn't it? Somebody's saying that it needs like that. Oh, yeah, right up there. That would be good. It would be. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm trying to close this thing up. 
Uh, all right, so a couple things I still want to do. Um, right down here, I'm going to do the same thing because I think I have this as two separate pieces. I'm going to make them into a group, go into that group and explode these two pieces so they can join together. Um, from there, I'm going to come up to the top here. Offset that ever so slightly. Drop that straight down. Drop that down here. I'm going to pull this out a little bit. And then I'm going to, oops, forgot all this was separate because it was broken before. Push that in a little bit. I'm doing a, a high level of detail to emulate what we got going on in other places. And actually, in this one, too, if we look at um, we actually offset this all as well. Let's offset the whole thing like this. And then close that. Close that. Oops. Wrong side. Awesome. Oops, that was wrong. All right, and then I'm going to just pull these out a little bit. I got some I got some stuff to smooth here. Let me bring it back a little bit. There we go. It's cool how much like you just did a little bit of relief like that. It really adds a lot to the uh, the look. Having another level in there. Um, but because I broke this apart into a separate piece, now I got to do this again and say. Offset it again from here. Uh, this is going to be tricky. Where can I pull this to? Oh, here we go. Pull that up to here. That's a reference. It'll give me the same, same dimensions. Pull this across to here. Same thing up here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to grab, oops, I don't want that to go to the corner either, so. I'm going to grab this right here and this right here and copy it. Before I push pull, I'm going to push pull these out. And of course, I can do the same thing. I can clean that up with soft and smooth. And then I'm going to hop down to this side over here into this group, Command V. I'll take that and spin it around. Put that in. Dang it! Undo. Undo is one of my favorite commands. I forgot that the the floor is not in the same spot here as it is on the other half of the building. There we go. Now I can pull that out. 
Pull that out, triple click. There we go. And uh, unfortunately, because again, everything is ungrouped, uncomponented, um, I do have to do this, I'll have to do this four times to get it in here. But fortunately, it's a quick enough process. I can just drop this in here. Triple click, soft and smooth. And then do one more right down here. So I flipped it the same way. This is going to go quicker because I can just. All right. Boom. Ooh, looking good. Um, awesome. One more thing that I definitely want to make sure I do is something about that. Well, I don't know. You're supposed to be able to see the sky from the ceiling of the Great Hall, right? So maybe I'm done. No, nah, that's a cop out. Um, fortunately, what I can do is I still have my shell. So if I turn my shell on, look at that. That's pretty good. But I don't need all of it. I only need a portion of it. So I think I might be able to grab this, delete it. Let's see. Let's see how that looks. Uh, show the rest of my model. It's not quite. Oh, that's fine. Why didn't I like that? Man, it might be there. That oh, fireplace. Oh. Mm -hmm. Just when I thought it was out. Um, I'm going to take this. I'm going to scale it out to the outsides of my end walls. And I'm going to come into it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to use uh, an extension called a DBO push line. To just pull these little wings out like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that geometry to cut these other groups. So I'm going to check on the inside, make sure that looks okay. Yeah, so that's just I. That worked out pretty well, man. I just I uh, just traced some stuff, and that everything lined up great. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, how can I do this? I know what I'll do. I'll make this into a solid. No, because these aren't solid, so there's no point. Um, I'm just going here. I'm going to triple click and copy this geometry. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to uh, paste in place. Does it look okay? It's not messing with anything. I'm going to grab this geometry. This geometry and this geometry and this geometry and this geometry. I'm going to say intersect faces with selection. It should cut, chop everything off where it meets this, so I should be able to do that. Yep. And get rid also of. that and that. Alright. And I can also get rid of all that. Okay, so I can do the same thing down here. Um, paste in place. And then same thing, shift select all this. Alt select these pieces. Alt is just add, it's not subtract. If you do a uh, shift select across selected and unselected geometry, you'll turn things off. I don't want to turn anything off here. Then same thing, intersect faces with selection. 
I'm doing with selection because I don't, there's some geometry I don't want to break. And that's just going to break the stuff that laps over. Delete that, delete that, delete that, delete that. All right. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's coming together. Once again, I started into this not having any idea what was going to come out the other side, but <laughs> thus far, all right, so I'm going to grab one of these. I'm going to paste in place, and I'm just going to select, I'm going to do this. I'm going to view, uh, hide similar components. Too much stuff going on there. Um, and I'm just going to select, shift select, just that. That work. Intersect faces with selection, and then I can get rid all of this. And all of everything else. I think that's good. Let's see. Nice. Now what I will have to do is I will have to uh, come in here. And I'm just going to do Special lines. All right, there we go. That's the exterior of the interior of the Great Hall. So now if we look in here, oh yeah, it's all coming together. Get rid of that line. Awesome. Last piece, the fireplace. Um, to do this, I'm going to throw a section plane on. Because I'm not going to try to I'm going to try to just sneak inside and see, see that. I'm just going to go like that, chop it in half, and then I can right click and say hide my section plane. All right. Now, if we look at, turn my reference back on temporarily, this middle bay becomes a fireplace. So that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's this one right here. Um, I'm assuming it goes all the way. You can't. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> you can't have a, a fireplace with a window where the chimney is, right? So it's safe to delete these. Um, I'm going to have to take these two now, and they will have to go into a group, and then I'll have to go into that group. And I'll have to. Yeah, I'm not gonna have it. It's fine. I'm cutting some corners now. I'll be honest. All right, grab all this. Actually, not all that much. Let's grab some of this. Delete that. No. I'm trying to figure out how to non-destructively. There we go. This will work. Non-destructively, or as with little destruction as possible. rid of all of this. Um, all right, nice and clean. Um, oops, trying to delete that boundary up there. There you go. Get rid of all that. And then same thing here, because I should be able to just do 
do all this stuff. That way, yay, yay. You know, I always wonder if. Oops. Break this right here. Break this right here. Let's say I wonder if I was really good about welding, like all the time. If I was constantly going in and making sure every arc was welded, I wonder if that would save me time in these kinds of cleanup areas. Because right now the issue is these arcs got broken somewhere, so I got to come back in and clean them all up. See, look at that. All these little pieces. Um, I don't know what I did to break them, but I, but I broke them. So I wonder if I was if I was diligent about that. I know diligence not really my thing, but uh, can't help but wonder. All right, I guess I really don't need to clean up the backside here. This doesn't really matter. All right, so now I have this open space where I can I don't really need this anymore either. Where I can put my fireplace, and I do have a reference image. I have a reference image of uh, what is going on here. It is one, one, of, one of the images that did turn out, it turned out pretty good. Um, it's probably still, it's still low quality, but you can at least, there we go. Uh, yeah, we can do that. All right, it's gonna go, it's gonna be whatever size I say it's gonna be. That's exactly how big it's gonna be. Um, oh, actually, that was, so these are brought up at these ones, so. Grab this, grab these two, make them unique, and come in here. Let me pull that up. I'll pull it up. I grab it by the bottom point right here. And strain it to vertical by hitting the blue or the down arrow key, and then I'll go reference this point right here. So they're at the same size. Um, now, I'm gonna take this back. Let's take it all the way back for right now. And now we'll toss in a fireplace. It's not the full length, it's not the full width of it. Come in the middle. We'll say it's mm, that big. Oh, there we go. Sorry, every time I grab my mouse, I pull it down in the corner. And I got a hot corner set up to turn on my. <laughs> All right, so this is kind of cool. So this is going to be. almost up to the top of the window. So I'm gonna go about there. Um, there. So this comes out a little bit like, say like that. And this is gonna come out significantly more. And I'm gonna grab this line right here and just move that forward to deform like that. And then I'm going to come here, push this back to here. Um, grab just those pieces, offset that to We got Paul trying to warn you about uh, the side windows. Oh. So uh, you need to make them unique at the bottom level. These ones? 
Why is that? This, this geometry is actually not a part of the window. It's a part of this group. So I don't have to worry about, I can pull this across my trim over to here again without actually affecting the window. I had that same thought too. Um, but I'm actually, I'm actually fairly safe right there. I'm going to grab this, this, and this. If that's what you're talking about. If not, if not, Paul, let me know if there's still something wrong. It is totally possible that something else is going on there. Um, all right, so that's a good, decent representation of that. I'm not going to go in. There's actually like a coat of arms, and uh, I'm guessing the sig sigils, sigils, the symbols for each of the four houses are on here too. But yeah. that's not going to happen. <laughs> just, be, just, just being honest, you guys. You know that. All right, so just gonna push this up a little bit, um, and it does have a little bit of a, a little more fanciness, a little more fanciness happening right here. Uh, and it, I am noticing that there's, there's actually this. Uh, I want to call it a chair rail, wood paneling. I don't know what you'd call it. Um, going all the way around here. I did not, I didn't do that. Um, but it does, we do have this thing going on, which I wanna, wanna do. I'm just gonna say, oops. Something like, too much. Get that line back. There we go. All right. Fireplace is in. Yeah. Um, save. Uh, Wayne's coding. Thank you. That is, that is the thing. Um, which I could actually do fairly easily. All I'd have to do is come in Grab this guy, move him up a little ways. And I don't know if this is one of those, is this one of those magic things that changes depending on how the room's being used? Um, I don't know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, the Wayne's coding <laughs> spell, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that sounds like a thing, I yeah. buy it. All right, so I'm just gonna do, this is gonna be, this is gonna be quick and dirty Wayne's coding, but uh, here, let's do this. Um, We'll go, I'm gonna divide this into three. I'm gonna divide this into four. I'm gonna stick some lines in here. Oops. Offset each of these squares just a teeny bit. Double click after you offset once, offsets the exact same amount, as long as you don't drag your mouse between the clicks, which is entirely possible, and I do it a lot. All it takes that little little bump. Alright, and just I'm gonna grab this one right here, move it up a little bit. 
And I'll just pull this out just enough to give it a little bit of relief. That looks, it's gonna work. Um, use a texture instead, Alberto says. No, actually that's a great idea. Textures are awesome ways to put in quick and dirty detail. Um, unfortunately, that would mean me going to Google and looking for pictures or importing them or something. I just figured this would be this would be a quick and uh, I said quick and easy way to do it. We're right, we're right after three o'clock, so we're we're at wrap it up time anyhow. Um, but yeah, let's look at this. Let's look at this thing without uh, I'm gonna delete my images there. I'm going to uh, go to Outliner and get rid of that. And we'll go as if we were just walking in the front door. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this. Since I didn't put any detail in this door, I'm just going to make this a doorway. That we can just step right into. Nice. Here, actually, let's do this. Let's, let's drop a camera right here in the middle of this front entryway. That's what a five foot six student walking into Hogwarts for the first time would see if they decided to paint absolutely everything white. Uh -huh. um, and let's 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 use look around. Wait, that's already in there. Heck yeah, that turned out pretty sweet. I am I am not disappointed in that at all. Oh no! <laughs> I did something so dumb. Oh, remember when I did this and I made this thing here? Look at the look what the name of this is right here. End window. That's good. This one right here is window. If I go into window, look what I got going on right here. See all that stuff that happened? So this is still called window assembly. If I come into this end window, I click into it and I click again, look what I have. Window assembly. So, I did again. I nested and I, I even called it out. You have to be careful about this. I had a component in a component and I wasn't conscious of that. So I got to take this now, make this unique, and call it end. Oh, Paul, yeah, I got what you're saying now, Paul, when you said the end. Yeah, Paul's right. All right, so now that's end window assembly. Fortunately, it's not too painful to fix. Because I can just come in here and I can go into this right here and delete my extra three pieces out. Grab this and Paul called it out. I thought you were talking about that little piece of trim right there. All right. Still big, still fairly big, but not as big as before. Okay, there we go. Dang. Come on, wizards. Do some magic it right. All right, so one more thing we could do, and just because I'm interested to see what this looks like, I want to come into one of these, and I'm going to put a uh, glass texture in here. No, actually, you know what? I'm just going to make it fully transparent. I'm going to, no, I'll use glass and I'll just drop it to like 15%. Oops. Probably safe too. Solid, solid idea. Mm -hmm. Drop that really translucent to like, there we go, 15%. And then I'll have to do the same thing up here. Those all look the same. That should be all I have to do because they're all the same thing. I want to do that, save, because what I want to do is I want to turn on shadows. Let's 
Let's see, where's my, my shadow settings? Let's get around to the sun. All right, that, that's coming through two there. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Oh, I was hoping to be able to go in and have time to put in furniture and stuff like that, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to share this up on 3D Warehouse. So I'm going to let me put my let me put my little little standing point right inside that furniture way again. Position my camera right here. Let me look up. Oh yeah. All right. Um, You've been good, Mark, but it's you're not wearing a wizard robe. It's time to go. Um, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to share this up to the 3D warehouse. And that's where I want you guys to go grab it and put in textures, put in props, put in some candles floating around, uh, put the night sky on the ceiling, whatever you want to do. If you want to put that rose window on the end that I skipped, go for it. Put a fire in the fireplace. Whatever you want to do, go ahead, grab it, take care of that. Um, and share it on our forum. So on our forum, we have that live modeling Hogwarts Great Hall. You guys take this and get it across the finish line and share it and let me see what you do with it, okay? So I got the modeling done, but now you get to do the good part. Make it pop, make the whole thing awesome. Actually, I shouldn't say I got the modeling done. I got it started. There's plenty more that could be done with this. This is just what I was able to do while rambling at you for three hours. <laughs> so there's more to be done. Feel free to change anything and everything in here and let me see what you can come up with. Um, so I will do that as soon as we're done with this. I will put it up on 3D Warehouse and uh, I will share the link on our forum. Uh, but that's it for now. So this is, this is where we're going to. This is the, the good stopping point. This is where we're ending. Um, let us know what you thought of that, if that was a good idea. And what we want to hear more than anything else is what else should we model? We have a list of ideas that you guys have given us, but we're always trying to add to it. Um, so we will, if you can throw it up right now, if you want, uh, say what would be what would be a good thing. Throw your ideas up. We will leave the chat open as usual. We'll just leave the chat running for about five ten minutes after we conclude uh, this stream. You guys can leave in the comments what you think would be good, or if you want to throw it on the forum, go into any of these live modeling. Uh, topics and say, hey, it would be cool if you did this or this. That would be awesome. Um, we like doing these, but it's, it's so much more fun when it's something you guys are excited about, too. Um, having said all that, there will not be a Friday afternoon live next week. Um, I'll be in Denver, well, Westminster. I'll be, I'll be in Colorado doing our final boot camp. So I'll actually be doing some training and uh, maybe somebody on here is in there. Somebody was from Colorado that made a comment. Um, we're gonna be training some more people up to use SketchUp, and uh, that's what we'll be focusing on next Friday. Next Friday, I'll be in the middle of the second day of class teaching some SketchUp. But we'll be back here the week after, and the week after is gonna be kind of fun because I have a Face Me component, you know, the 2D scale components like we saw Mark. It's, uh, you know, you see my guy, gray shorts, red shirt. Um, it's been my scale figure for four years now. It's time for a new one. So um, I'm going to come in here uh, and I'm going to take some pictures. I'm going to have some, some reference pictures of me, a couple poses, but I'm going to need your, need your guys' help to pick the pose, which pose is right. Um, and then that's when we start to have some fun because I like to use the reference photo just to kind of get the body and the shapes right, the, you know, the right thing. But then we go from there and we can do anything we want. So I want you guys to come with lots of ideas for what my new scale figure should look like. If we want to uh, put some things on him, around him, whatever. I have lots of tips and tricks for how to do scale figures. I usually do scale figures realistically about 20 minutes or so, but we'll slow it down and we'll, uh, we'll spend some time on this. And we'll talk about uh, what makes a good scale figure image but also what tools to use to actually get a good solid scale. Not solid, because they're not solid. They're just, they're paper thin, you know. They're 2D. That's why they're called 2D figures. Uh, there's a lots of name for them. Scale figures, face me's, 2D components. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Little flat guy. So come back, come with your ideas. 
and uh, help me make the best possible scale figure, something that I can be proud of and you guys can be proud of. Or maybe I'll end up roasting myself, but this is probably a stupid thing to invite you to. But <laughs> yeah, um, somebody already recommended that I put little T-Rex arms on it. So uh, we'll see where that goes. Anyhow, that's it for today. Uh, you guys have any final questions, comments, uh, really th throw it out, throw those questions out, and uh, we'll hang out for another couple minutes. And then, uh, like I said, then we'll wrap it up. So thank you so much. Um, this whole thing, this live stream, wouldn't be anything it weren't for you guys. It would just be, as I always say, it'd be me modeling alone in a room. I couldn't even get Eric to come out and hang out if that were the case. It's, he's only here because of you guys. So thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for helping out. Um, every time you saw SketchUp come up in the comments, that was Eric. That was not me. Um, Glad to be here. Yeah, this was great. Uh, but yeah, thanks. So we'll see you not next week, but the week after talking about 2D scale figures. Thank you.